Hey guys, welcome. Oh, look, I've got a message already. Hang on. Okay, no problem. Fucking phone. I hate this phone, really do. Uh, hi guys, who we got here? We got a uh, scroll to the top of my chat. Chat's been really funny today. I don't know why. Uh, Mr. G, Amok Steps, Furry, Doxter, Andy Magic Knight, uh, Mad Beagle, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. who else is in here? Furry, I think I might have also, oh no, I haven't said Furry, Furry, uh, just trying to catch everyone, Colt 45, Lesnar 4, um, I'm not going to say hello to the bot. I think that's everybody. Have I missed anybody? Um, no, I don't think so. I think I've got everybody. Acmafin, uh, Hayes as well, DMX87. Wow, a lot of people here tonight. Oh, a lot of people ch chatting tonight. CB Meeks as well. Uh, C64 Mark. Wow. God, you guys are chatting an awful lot. Uh, Hacksaw DK as well. Welcome, guys. Um, yeah, so uh, I did the um, the editor on uh, when was it? I did it yesterday, Friday. Finished it off, so we have no lifesavers getting all the chatting before the racing starts. Yeah, I still need to figure out how to uh, how to segregate that chat, uh, segregate the race stuff a little bit. Let me uh. Uh, thank you for the gift sword, Amok, to uh, Code and Mick. Welcome to the subs. Uh, letting you all shake out the editor bugs first. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm going to go through the editor in a minute. Um, let me just start with the wine. Actually, let me start the races off. There you go. Um, so, yeah, another real cut. I've already drunk a couple of glasses of it, so I couldn't resist. So, oh. One of the Discord channels. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. God, that, put that cork in tight. Can't we all have 10,000? Yes, you may. So when this wine is finished tonight... Which will probably be pretty quick. I'm going to leave it open, actually, to breathe a bit. Um, I've got a bottle of Red Leg Rum on the shelf behind me, so should be cracking on with that later on. Um, hopefully all the cameras are working. Yeah, okay. OBS has been a bit weird recently. I don't know if I accidentally updated it or something, but... Um... Mm -hmm. It's a good wine, that as well. So that wine, I put that on my list as well. So this is the wine I'm drinking tonight. Um, okay. Oh, Robocop. I recognise this tune. Um, yeah, so I did the... Uh, why is that showing us highlighted? I don't know. And what is that? Oh, that's my stream. Okay. There's something weird going on today. I'm not sure what it is. Okay, so created the editor on Friday. Um, I've only had one one map submitted to me so far, but then I kind of expect most people will want some kind of tips on how to use it anyway. Um, and the map, so it was... Um, uh, Hayes, who submitted a map based on uh, Mario Cement Factory. So let's, uh, let me show you that. Um, and I'll go through some design tips as well, because there's a few issues with this map that um, we need to sort out. So, um, Okay. 
so the first thing to note about the editor is um, you can only use these tiles that are in here. Obviously, there's no you can't import tiles. You can just use these tiles that are in here. Um, so the first rule is to try and keep the the maps using the same tile set. So Hayes has actually used three different tile sets here. Now I think these corner pieces are probably okay because they they kind of look look nice. But there's another issue with these which I'll explain in a moment. Um, so the important thing here is to try and use the same tile set. So here, here is uh, two other tile sets that have been used. Um, so Hayes is actually using all four tile sets here. No issues. <laughs> um, so we want to try and keep um, each level to it to its own um, set of tiles because it, it's kind of world based, if you like. So. Um, so the first thing I, I would say is, is these need to be replaced with um, either this tile set here, or this tile set needs to be put everywhere. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make some changes now to 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 match the tile sets like so. Um, and that would be like so. Can editor only show one set I want to pick from? Um, I could probably make that change, but I, honestly, it's um, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe I could maybe create three different tile sets. So, so there are these X's in here which show tiles that you you shouldn't use. Um, so just avoid using avoid using these tiles, and that's just because they're not defined, and we may want to define something with them at a later date. Um, so just avoid using those ones. And what I might be able to do is make it so that if you switch, I could maybe put a tile set switch here. Um, and when you switch tile sets, it just blanks some of them out with these things. Um, can I increase the size of the editor window? I don't think I can actually. It won't scale up like that, I don't think. No. So I apologize for that. Um. It is quite small, isn't it? Yeah, looking at that. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so you can accidentally pick and mix tiles from different... Oh, my God. Activin's at it already. Oh, dear. Yeah, the, the window size is locked. I could probably do something about that because it's just... I mean, this is just a browser window internally, so I could probably just make it use uh, browser scaling as well. Um yeah, Canvas works Canvas works really well well for this, yeah. It is HTML5, yeah. Um so yeah, the the first thing is to try and use the same tile sets around. This the second thing is um solid ground is is determined only by these white portions that sit on top. So oh in fact I can show you what happens with this level. So you can see these areas here don't have white sections on top and they, that causes some problems. Um, yeah, I'm not going to tweak the OBS settings. It will go all go to shit if I do that. Okay, so the first problem is, is because there's no solid ground on here, you can fall through these. Now this is is by design because you need to be able to jump up through the platform so they need to be passable vertically uh, but they're not passable horizontally so you can see i can get stuck in them there until i jump so that's that's one thing you need to do you need to make sure that you put uh, white platforms on top of everything um, the other thing is as well is some of the enemies change directions just at walls and some of them change direction at the end of colorable areas as well. So, for instance, if the jelly bean guy is down here, which he, he won't be, he will actually walk through this platform here until he reaches this edge. So that's something to, to take note of as well. Um, so let's let's go and fix those issues. So one way around this is if you if you have a wall on top of a, a solid area, then it should just be a solid wall. So this should probably be like this instead um actually not that one that one so uh you can use these kind of edge pieces 
to kind of um, fill it out a little bit. I think that's one. That's the other one, isn't it? So it kind of blends in a little bit more. But they do need the white pieces on top. So this should probably be more like... Um, actually, it doesn't have a piece to do that. So it's going to have to be two sections like this. So that will solve a lot of the issues we've got with the um, with, with the character falling through. Um, the other thing as well is try and use the map multicolor to add as much color into the map as possible. Adding red like that is going to make it look kind of monochrome. Um, so just pick another color to to go alongside this. Um, Looks like the floors on the bottom don't have the capped ends to. Yes, there's, um, yeah, like these bits here. Um, also, there's a, there's a few there's a few subtleties in the tile set. So I don't know if you can see this, but there's a you probably can't, but there's a tiny little line there. In fact, let me load the the map up. That's the icing on the top. My God, you're on form tonight. The kind of got stuck on a non-walkable platform. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, this is why you need that that stuff on top as well. So, um, so I don't know if you can see that, but just in this area here, there's a little black line, and that's because there's two two tiles that are very similar. Um, this is wrong as well by the looks of things. Um, you see, this is this doesn't have a base on it, so it should have a black line on it. So to go and fix those, so that's this one here, um, which just needs switching for that. So it does have the black line on the bottom. And this black line down here is because of this this piece here, probably. Uh, no, not that piece. Uh, oh, no, it is. It is that one. It is. Okay, that one can't be fixed then with the current tile set. Oh, no. Hang on, can it? Uh, oh yeah, it can be fixed. It's going to be that there, like that. There you go. Gets rid of that line. So you just need to keep an eye on it. I mean, I will go through every level anyway. Uh, we're not going to just drop levels in the game without checking them. So I will go through and, and check them all anyway and make small adjustments like this where they're needed. Um, but yeah, just, just keep an eye on, on those things. So some other minor things um, that are worth noting is um, if you've got... Uh, something like this that's all the way down down one side this could potentially cause problem hang on something just banged in the other room Uh, my headphones. <laughs> you ruined my level. Well, you're welcome to you're welcome to uh, keep submitting uh, levels if you if you want to update it. Then uh, that's absolutely fine. I'm just trying to explain the rules which make the levels work or not work because there are some um, there are some issues around this. Can you use the white stuff alone? Yes, you can. If you wanted to, you could just use the white stuff on its own. You don't have to have the base on it. Um, oh, I'm out of breath. Yeah, the, the thing is, is I can't test everything. So I might be able to add some tests 
for like walls without tops on the platforms and stuff. But um, some of the stuff I I just kind of have to um, have to explain. But you can always you can always test it just by going into the game and pressing Control T and testing it. If you've got Vice set up in the uh, default folder, then it will work. Otherwise, there's a uh, there's an inch, there's a path uh, link in the um, uh, there's a path link in the pins in Discord to to show you how to change that. Um, but you can always just kind of go into the game and just test it, and make sure things things work all right. Um, so one of the one of the problems it might not actually be a problem now. We, we shall see. Um, There seem there did seem to be some issues with this wall down the side like this, but it might not be an issue now that the um now that these blocks have been put on the top. Um, but it did seem like it was possible for an enemy to get stuck in this this location here. Uh, so just keep an eye on that. Try out different enemy types. Um, also try and try and plan the levels. Um, Think about level progression, right? So um, obviously this is um, this has got one, two, three, five different enemy types. I don't know how many enemies are actually in this level. Let me have a look. Um, oh, one of everything. So oh, the background color as well. So I've actually removed this background color because this color is used for the um, stun um, thing. So. It's no longer in the background color list, which is why it's not shown here. So you'd have to pick one of the darker or lighter grays here instead. Um, but that that should be in the latest version, 1.02. Uh, can you give some tips on what would make a level hard or easy? Um, so the majority of it's going to come down to the space that you've got to move around in order to grab the enemies. So... Um, Positioning of the pipes is gonna is gonna make a a big impact on whether or not um, enemies you know uh, are kind of free to move around. Oh, I know this is the problem. This gap here, so the it's possible for the flying saucer to get through that gap and get stuck uh, in like a weird weird loop up here. So you just got to be careful about leaving too much of a gap, uh, uh, not leaving enough of a gap for things at the top. So I would probably get rid of these pieces up here. Uh, like so. Um, it still leaves it still leaves the potential for something to get stuck on here because this is a wall, uh, but not necessarily solid on the top. So, but as I say, I, I will. Um, I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to kind of critique this this level as as such. It's just I'm just trying to show you um, how to how to do these things. Um, so yeah, positioning of the pipes is going to have a big impact on that. So you've got to think about um, what enemies you've got and what their behaviors are. So for instance, this is one of every enemy. So so this is probably quite a hard level because you've got you've got some enemies that are actually quite difficult. So the the um, the jelly bean is quite simple uh, behavior, but it has a it has a mode which actually makes it difficult to. Um, uh it makes it quite difficult to get so uh let me just put a couple more i'm i'm gonna mess around with this level a lot but um it's not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that i just wanna i wanna demonstrate something so if you just had this enemy in place you'll see what this enemy does, which makes it quite difficult, which is if you get on the same level as it charges at you, which means you've got to kind of time your jump perfectly. So if this is on a really small platform or you've got two like this, it's actually going to be quite difficult to get in there and, and shoot them. So so stuff like that can have an impact on difficulty. It's really just knowing knowing what each enemy does, really, more than anything else. Um, also having having a difficult like this is quite difficult to get um to get up to the top you'd have to kind of go this way and then over which is not easy so the easiest way is going to be down here so it's it, I, I mean it's hard to say what's going to make a level great and what's going to make a, a level not great it just comes down to um 
testing the level yourself really i guess um yes steps i will when the levels are submitted i will go through and i'll make some minor changes um here and there um because i i, I do want to keep the game in a certain style not every level will get through as well um I want to make sure that every level in the game is 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 fun to play and um, and fits the kind of style. So um, I may have to cut some levels here and there. Um, I'm going to try and make a few myself as well. Shall I'll change the enemies when I know each does? Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. I'm not. As I say, I'm not. I'm not pretty. It's you're the only one that submitted a level. So um, good on you. I mean, no one else. No one else did yet. So. Um, but it's good that you did because it gives me a way to just kind of demonstrate the things that are going to make the levels easy or, or difficult to play. So this... Okay, there was a little weird bug there. This level doesn't seem too hard now with these guys. But there will be certain enemies which are really a pain in the ass to, to get um, depending on the level layout. So with a very sparse level layout, Hopefully this should work. Also, I really like the switch and uh, door placement on this one. Because in two players, you both have to be here. And there's a bonus for getting to the door first. So the, you've got kind of quite a gauntlet to get through to get to the get to the door. So it's a nice placement that I like that. So let's, let's do a new level and, and demonstrate some stuff. So one other thing to, to bear in mind um, with this, let me do a purple background level. Uh, and let's go for, let's go for these ones. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a very, very simple uh, level just to demonstrate some things. So when you place the door as well, the door needs to be placed. Uh, oh, actually, it can't do that here because it needs to be this one. Try and uh, try and reduce kind of patterns as well by kind of dotting around other tiles, especially in this this tile set as well. Um, so the door needs to be on solid ground. It takes a two by two tile. Uh, area so you you need flat ground at the top of the tile underneath and you need to just click somewhere um like that if you try and click too low it won't won't allow you to to place it if you try and click too high it won't allow you to place it and you'll get the flashing red um, but if you click at the right height then it will draw the door down to the floor so you need a door in the level you need a switch in the level and you need a player one and a player two spawn and you need five pipes as well. So pipes that go up will go all the way to the top of the screen. Pipes that go down will go down to the, the floor uh, to a solid ground like that. Okay. So this is a really, really simple level, but if I, if I just make some changes here, so if I put um, these guys a little bit further apart and I get rid of some floor here, Ignore the fact that they haven't, you know, you would probably fill these tiles out properly with, with edges like this. Um, which one it would be a bit that one, wouldn't it? So you create proper edges. But if you create a gap like this, this entire column here, these four uh, columns of tiles here are going to be completely fall through. So there is no nothing to stop you falling at this point. So if I test that, Bi biceps. Thanks, Wolf Game Blitz for the bits. Appreciate it. All goes towards the wine. Okay. Uh, trying to keep an eye on the chat as well for any questions about it as well. Oh, I've not put any enemies in. Let's put some enemies in. So the enemy spawn list, basically, you, you can have up to 56 enemies and eight power-ups. Um, and you basically just pick the order that they appear in. So I'm going to pick um, the Cola Bottle guy because he drops off the edge of platforms. And you'll see what happens. 
Um, yeah, I can, I can, I mean, it's super, super simple. Um, it's just a little bit of Java, JavaScript, but I can, I can show you it. <clears throat> so what will happen is the, the cola bottle will drop off the edge and it will just continue to drop because there's nothing to stop him dropping. Now, sometimes this works all right. In fact, there's a level on uh, parasol stars that does exactly this. Um, Except the enemies that are there are flying enemies. So what happens is, is they fly around in this area. Then when you, you stun them or you, you kill them, they start falling down the screen like this. Um, and that, that means you have to kind of, you know, you have to absorb them or you, on, on press all stars, you have to do it at the right time. So this could be used to good effect on some levels. Um but just be aware that if you do that, you are gonna you are potentially gonna create a continuing cascade of of things falling down. Um, so the trick is to just try and look across the entire screen and see if you've filled in uh, that gap. So what I would probably do here, and I'll just do it with a with a straight platform, is just put something across there like that, and then that's just gonna stop things falling down. Anything that falls down here is gonna land on this platform and then walk the other way. Um, so that that would fix that particular problem but let's um let's show you what i mean with the uh with the flying um enemies so let's let's take these out and let's put a couple of these in um and let's put some platforms i mean like i say this is literally just for testing i'm not doing anything um that i'm gonna keep but so you could have something like that and then you could have your um whatever it doesn't matter if it's symmetrical or not Hey, bad boy, or licorice, I remember now. Condoms falling from the sky. So you see here, the, the enemies are going to fly around. So there, there's not a problem that this this gap exists here. Um, But what will happen is if you get them in the right place, they will continue to fall like so. So you'd have to absorb them as they go down, um, which in some places is going to be difficult. Like if it's right in the middle here, you're going to have to time this jump now to absorb it. So there are there are things that can make the um, the level interesting and a bit more kind of tricky to play, and and definitely go for that. Uh, you know, try try and add those kind of levels in because they're they're good to have. Um, but don't go overboard. We need easy levels as well, so um, which is something I've also noted on the on the Discord chat that we do need easy levels. Um, also, think about levels that introduce enemies as well. So you might want a level. Um, you know, the first level might be super super simple. Um, you might just have solid ground everywhere. Um, kind of like what we had on the on the main level, actually, on the uh, on the basic level. But uh, uh, and then maybe. I'm not going to I'm not going to go and make everything perfect but uh buddy's come along what happens if you spend too long on a level nothing at the moment if we if we deem the levels too too easy um then we can we can consider kind of adding some um different mechanic in to to combat that um 
like like you say, like a like a level speed up sort of thing or something. So I'm just trying to make what would be kind of a quite a simple beginner level here. Um, so on this this level, you might just want to put. Let's say this is the first level. You might just want to put simple enemies on. So just some cola bottles on here and maybe just six and one power up in the middle maybe then this level is going to be uh pretty simple to complete and just introduces the concept of one of the enemies um and i need a door on here I noticed the switch actually. So there might be some new tiles that go in here for the switches as well. Because uh, the switches seem to be. Uh... Where's that? The switches seem to be on single platforms at the moment. Like so. Which is fine. I mean, it's not, not a problem. Should still be able to design a, a decent level around that. I hate timers, but maybe a timer scene need to need an enemy. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of against timers as well. I I find them a little bit annoying. Um, but they do add to the kind of the manicness sometimes of a game, so it could be handy to have. So you see how this this level is pretty simple. There's a safe spot here, so always think about safe spots as well so a really easy level will have a safe spot so this is a safe spot um this is a safe spot this is a safe spot there's a lot of safe spots on this level um actually the these are less safe but once the enemies are out there they're safe spots uh, because the enemies are just going to drop through this area here yeah that, i mean that's that's potentially what it could end up being uh, a hurry up enemy um the other thing i was thinking that could be nice is to have um rising water as well uh so as as the level as you as you start running out of time you get a kind of rising water effect that goes up the screen um it wouldn't be too hard to do by changing the background color and the multicolor and the multicolors on the sprites as well uh, so you could just have it moving up the screen and that would kind of force you to the top of the screen to fight. Um, and then if you if you manage to get everything, then the water would just drain out again. Uh, but that that's potentially what I was thinking. What, no, as soon as you absorb the last enemy, then the water would disappear. Uh, but it would make it would make it difficult. You would get into a point where it um, might be difficult. Yeah, the, the door and switch doesn't matter. As soon as you've killed the last enemy, as soon as the, the switch is active, the water would just disappear. And yeah, it could be soda as well, yeah. It would be... We could do whatever. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. It was just a, an idea I was thinking of based on the um, the water like smart bomb effect that you get in Parasol Stars. And Bubble Bobble, actually. Rising wine, yeah. <laughs> Mm. I like this remix. So yeah, the you know the 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 difficulty of the um of the level is basically down to which enemies you use, and then based on which enemies you use, and also how many there are as well. Obviously, obviously, if you use all fifty six enemies, that's going to be a difficult level to complete. Um, unless it was like this, it was fifty six enemies, and they were all like this, then it would be quite easy. You just sit here, sit here all day doing this um also think about it from the point of view of two players as well um what what would make um a fun kind of two player level as well so 
try and think about where the player spawns. Um, so you might have, for instance, a, a, what I think was a fairly interesting two-player level might be something like this, where you've got... Um, let's just build, build it from the top down. I don't care that it's the wrong characters here or not, but I'll show you an editor shortcut as well in a second. I don't know if anybody's used the copy area function, but it's quite useful. So this might be a, a, a simple, um, a simple uh, two player level, which could be quite fun. Um, I maybe make them with these platforms instead. Right, let me show you this area copy. So if you hold down shift while you're using this, you can draw this box. Um, so if you draw a box around a shape, you can then drag that shape to somewhere else as well. Um, and you can drag that around quite easily. Uh, you can also undo as well. So that, that's quite useful. The five pipes thing is a bit annoying. It was it would have been better with six pipes, but um whatever. Let's just make that uh let's put the pipe here. Actually, if I do you know, something like that. So what this is going to do is um, wrong ones. These guys are going to walk down the slopes. These guys are going to jump. Uh, but by having the players spawn on each side as well, it means you've got to kind of race to get to the top. So if a power-up appears here and you're over this side. What if you could have a different number of pipes for each level? Of, as easier levels could have um, fewer pipes. Um, yeah, potentially. Potentially, because the, the number of pipes denotes how many enemies are going to be on the screen at one time. So we could in theory add that um so that's a good idea might have a go at doing that uh in a minute actually um we're gonna we're gonna do some code around this because this is the first time we've had um a way of kind of testing out various levels so um i like that idea though that that could work i think can you do a shift to copy cut paste as well uh shift uh, you can't delete anything in here, um, but what you can do is if you want to delete an area, a whole area, um, you can draw a block like this and then you can just drag it to where you want. So you can delete a whole block if you want. But to be honest, deleting is quite easy with right click anyway. So this was more about if you've uh, kind of been intricately designing the the edges and the different corners and stuff, you can very easily just kind of, oops, uh, draw a box around that entire area and just copy that somewhere else. Um, this has allowed me to put six pipes down, so that's a bug. There must be exactly five pipes and it says there's six. So it shouldn't be copying pipes in that case. Um, which is fine. Not a problem, it stops you from... Oh god, entertainer, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that's what we'll do first. Actually, we'll have a go at um, we'll have a go at changing the uh, the pipe routine to allow different numbers of pipes, um, and see what happens with that. So I'll I'll show you the um, the code for the 
for the editor. It's not nice code at all. Um, I started doing it in React, but it's not really React because I've just piled it all into one component. Um, so it's not the it's not the neatest code at all. Um, but I was in a rush to get this done, so I'm not really too fussed. Uh, but basically, to inject the stuff into um, into Vice, what I, do, I don't know if you can see that. Is that big enough? There you go. So I use this this method here to generate the the level data, and this is just this is passed in the data from the levels. So this is like you know player spawns here, um, and it does the conversions that it needs to get this data into an array. So I just basically create an array of data. So this is this is the data that needs to be put into the game. Could make for it interesting two player. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Thanks for the bits, Hayes. Um, and then the trick to inject. Oh my god, this music! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, uh, here's where I do the injection. So. Basically, I um, that shouldn't be there. Now. I load in the PRG, the original PRG, which is here. Um, then I create a pointer to where I want to replace the the memory. The actual memory address of the map is at O X eight three hundred, or basically that in in kick assembler uh, but a prg has two bytes at the beginning which is its start address so i have to add two to it so it becomes two. Oh, i got this tune <laughs> yeah <laughs> fucking hell it, it destroys my brain it really does destroy my brain um and then this minus here is just subtracting the the entry point for the prg so the first two bytes in the prg shows where it loads to um, but obviously the, the PRG bytes start at zero, so you have to subtract the start address as well, and start address is 0801. Um, and then when you've done that, all you have to do is basically just go through it and, and replace bytes in it and then save it out again. Uh, pretty simple. If anybody wants to know how to do this, I can, I can explain it. Um, and then all it does is run this batch file, and the batch file um, just contains... Um, uh, a vice call basically to to start vice up um uh, uh, uh. Da, 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 da. okay right let's um i'm trying to think if there's anything else i need to tell you about map creation um I think that's it really just just trying because the the thing is is if i just let everybody go to town on this and do whatever the hell they want in each one then we're going to have a very um a very kind of eclectic collection of maps that don't really gel together in any way so this is why i want to try and keep these styles together so try and use the, the, the these things from the same styles um try and uh try not to use all the enemies i would say on on every map um really it should be a, a handful of enemies for each map each map should kind of have a theme each level should kind of have a theme like this is the flying saucer level this is the candy cane level um this is the one where the the coke bottles drop down from everywhere um that sort of thing um and yeah just trying to just get inventive with it as well so i just had another idea which could work is you have um you have some platforms up here which are not reachable um uh, would it be a good feature if certain pipes can only spawn certain only pipe it would be a good feature but that with the implementation we've got would be not impossible but it would be difficult to implement i would say um so good idea but i'm not sure it would it would um be too easy to implement so you could have a level like this where 
Um, Oops. See, just with Coke bottles, this could be quite an interesting level. Yeah, I, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the maps that everybody's done and I'm going to tweak things to how i think they need to be to fit fit the style and the flow of the game properly um do you see this becomes quite a tricky level now because where do you where do you go to to get away from things i mean you could probably go go up here as well but it's quite dangerous up there So yeah, just uh, have a have a good think about them. But um, submit as many as you want. Um, um, but just just realize I may end up uh, doing some edits on maps. Uh, I may have to reject some maps because they just don't work. Um, and it's not because I I'm saying that any particular level is shit. They just all need to gel together. So um, I still think players and monsters should wrap off the edges to the other side. Well, we can we can have a go at doing that as well. I guess. Um, uh, can the crown end up falling forever? Yes, it can. If it, if there's a if there's a gap, um, then the crown can end up falling forever. Yeah. Um, I made an awesome level for this memory method. Yeah, I. It's, it's one of those things. I mean, it was all right for Luma because Luma, um. The the whole whole idea with Luma is that I didn't want to reject anybody's level. It was a charity stream, and everybody who put some put time into to add to the game um, deserved to have that level in there. If, as long as it was completable, I didn't care, and that's what that's what made um, the job that myself and um, Mr. G and and um, um, Chiz and you know the, the the people who tested it. That's what made our job so hard because we had to then try and figure out how to organize those levels so that there was a good mix of kind of devious levels and levels which were just plain a pain in the ass because you had hundreds of moves in them um in the editor what do the player tiles represent yeah they just they get they just represent the player spawn they don't actually add anything so you can you can um you can put a, a tile behind it like that so it's just player sprites basically uh and the door uh it draws the door on the map because you can't have any tiles behind it so if i if i move the door to over here uh, oh doors i can't be on a switch uh can't be on a pipe yeah so if i move it there and if i put this here and then try and move the door there that's not allowed and the reason that's not allowed is because the door animates out of the ground so the door needs a free four tiles uh, to to land in. How do we know what tiles are safe to use? You can use you can use any tile you you want, but just they they need to be um, thematic. So uh, the only ones you can't use are these um, these X's here. So just avoid those. But everything else you can use. Um, just try and like you know if you they they come in kind of blocks like this. So this is the kind of stripy stripy level then you've got the kind of square levels here uh and then you've got the um my beagles chocolate square levels and then you've got these kind of hexagon -y kind of levels just kind of yeah you have to pick from the same tile set i might add them in that so i'm going to make some notes actually of things i'm, I'm going to do i might make some changes this uh this week for this so uh i'll do some tile set switching um but it's the the way to know what constitutes a tile set is if you look at a tile, um, I'll, I'll put each tile set on. So each tile set has got a block of um, tiles that have the white stuff on top already. So that's one tile set. That's another tile set. Uh, 
that's another tile set and that's another tile set so it's these four tile sets so you pick one of these kind of patterns that you want either the stripes the little uh, gems um the the big chocolate squares or these kind of hex of big gems um and then just build a level based on on those um those elements basically yeah i liked i did like that in in the corner as well can you mix and match you can mix and match but there's a higher chance that i'm going to reject it or or edit it um so one of the things hayes did which actually did look all right as um as mad beagle said was let me just clear this so hayes had um something like this um but he'd put these in the corners and that kind of looked all right so that that's kind of a nice a nice way of mix and matching uh whereas doing that and then having having this in the middle of it is just wrong that's that's going to get rejected or at least changed so so yeah just use it sparingly use it if it adds to the kind of uh, the the look of the level uh, and doesn't actually um destroy anything uh do you need to set anything in vice only got black screen no background no sprites try different um no you shouldn't need to it's literally just running the um it's literally just running the, the PRG. If you want to test it, you can drag the PRG out of the folder. So the folder is in, uh, if you go into your uh, file explorer, uh, the local app data. Uh, so you get into your local app data folder and go down to programs. And you'll see pick and mix editor in here. Um, and it's start patch.prg. Uh, I can fit there. You good not to accidentally pick a mix of sets? Yeah, you got to follow it. Yeah, so if you look in that folder, there's a there's a patched PRG, um, which you can just drag and drop into um, into Vice, and it should run the same. But it should run through the Vice command. If 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 it's not, then you can always check in the batch file um, and see if you need to change anything in here. Uh, it could be that you need to use x sixty four s c or something. I I I'm not sure, uh, but just just check out that path and change it as you need be. Um, the path that's in there is the default path that Kick Assembly uses, so it should be common for most people who follow the stream. I think um, I know a few people have moved that folder to somewhere else, so I still get a black screen. Do you get a black screen if you use uh, start .prg? So try dragging the original on. Uh, and see see what you get so can we run the editor on real hardware too uh and post you the disk <laughs> uh right i'm gonna go for a, a quick break then when we come back i'm gonna um i'm gonna have a go at changing the number of pipes as well so okay so you get a black screen on start.prg also um okay you might have uh have you got injector ram uh set it could be something to do with that because uh, this does need vice setting up as um so if you go settings uh machine auto start i don't know if you can see this auto start and then there's this setting just here um which is the auto start prg mode just make sure that's on injector ram otherwise it might not load properly all right i'm going to take a quick break i'll be back in five minutes guys be right back all right i'm back oh it's having a coughing fit brought my rum as well um did that work for you mr g i think i saw you say it did um as i went um i can't i can't find it again now oh wow yes it worked awesome cool yeah because i'm not maximizing the 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 file at all yet so all right <clears throat> 
I'm going to have some bits wrong as well. Let's put that there for now. Uh, what I'm going to do with two-player mode is I'm going to set up... Um... Well, that's quite a lot. All right, I have to take my time on this. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm going to set up um, Hamachi and... Um... Is it Hamachi? I think that's what it's called. Uh, and do some, do some two-player tests with you guys. Well, that is nice. It tastes like cream soda. It's nice vanilla -y. Yeah, that's the one. So I'm going to set a VM up and, and put a matchy on it and stuff um, and, and have that run it. I was actually thinking if there would be a way to um, to automate that, to have like little tournaments and stuff. But um, so this is uh, Red Leg Spiced Rum. So that's a nice, nice um, Caribbean spiced rum. Beam Racer is available. Oh, interesting. I might have to try and get one of those as well. The thing is, I've got the Mega 65 coming, so I, I probably don't want to um, get too much, so too much on the go. All right, so let's have a go at uh, doing the pipes thing. So first of all, what I need to do, I just need to change this to um, not crap out if there's more than five pipes and actually fill the data in. Um, uh, what am I drinking? <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking, so I'm drinking, uh, thank you for the bits, by the way, I'm not, uh, appreciated, dude. I'm drinking, uh, Rioja, um, it's my favorite red wine, um, I've been trying a few different ones out. This is one of the nicest ones actually I've had, and I'm drinking uh, Jamaican uh, spiced rum as well. Um, so let's put some checks in here. So at most five pipe, uh, five pipes in here. Um, and then I basically i need to make sure that there's a way for the data to be um data to still be the same so i guess i can just put zeros in in would zero work yeah pipe length of zero would work so uh, i'm just going to fill this with 25 zeros and then um then this will work then so it's 5 10 15 20 25 Okay, so let's make a level um, and see what happens. Well, do you want to do this? Terminate, yes. Tonight, Shalom would be mostly getting pissed, yeah. Oh, have you got a beam racer? Have you got one already, Hayes? Nice. Are you going to do some code for it? I'd I'd love to see I'd love to see some stuff on it. I I don't want to get into it myself because um with the Mega sixty five coming I don't want to be distracted by another piece of hardware. Um and to be honest the mate the the Mega sixty five is going to probably be able to do pretty much everything the uh the Beam Racer can do anyway. So, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, it would be I'd be interested to see some stuff on it for definite. Um. <clears throat> I think the the one of the most interesting things with the Beam Racer is you should be able to take existing games and make kind of some quite nice changes to um, to them. Um, so, for instance, if you've got um, uh, things like multiplexes and stuff, you could offload them to the Beam Racer and they become a lot more efficient. So, in a game like uh, what was the what was the fighting game? Is it Double Dragon? I think had the really really bad kind of uh multiplexed stuff um that that would work really really well um 
for that for fixing the multiplex in that because you could just offload the multiplex into the beam race and let that, that let that do it um yeah and as gunstar says as well any game that uses bitmap blitting as well could be could be hugely improved as well um the thing is i think there's there's a really really good use for um for char modes and this is one of the things i like about the mega 65 actually is it doesn't use bit planes uh, the c65 does but the mega 65 doesn't the mega 65 uses char modes just like the commodore 64 but what it lets you do is is move them around at any point to any point in memory at any point on the raster beam as well and and to redraw several screens in the same location um so actually it's more more powerful than the than a bit plane approach uh, and it's more akin to what you would see in um arcade hardware uh speaking with different people but i'm really looking forward to it. i think i think we're going to be able to do some pretty amazing stuff with it okay so let's see if we can we can create a level that's just got um again i don't care how this level looks this is really just for for testing uh, but i want to see if i can create a level that's just got three pipes in it and what happens if i create a, a level with three pipes in it so i'm going to put 16 enemies in uh, and i'm just going to put three pipes in so <laughs> they need to tell it about this because it's credited me with the music and it's really not so <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so we've got a problem in that we're we're getting some spawn up here, um, which is causing us issues down here, obviously. So, oh, intro, yeah. So it causes causes some weird bugs. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, so this this gives us something to work on. So um, let's let's save that map out as uh, let's just put it on the on the desktop and we'll call it uh, ZZZ because then I can just scroll down to the bottom and find it. <clears throat> okay, so the the editor now allows that. So I'm going to up the version number in here. Uh, I think I I need to make this use a proper version system, and then then it automatically updates this, but. Um, so we need to change the level to to deal with that. Um, I also need to open the actual project folder in here. So here's where I need to drop the start file in. Okay. <clears throat> so we we can actually test this with the data that we've got already in the game. So let let's go that route first. I think. Um, okay. So let's create two columns. Let's stick our map data in this one. So what we're essentially doing is setting these to zero. I'm going to copy these lines because um, it's handy to keep the original data in here. Uh, so essentially what we're doing is we're just setting some of the pipe data to zero. Oh, shit. Because I think I think uh, I think it was Stepsy suggested it, this would be a good feature actually for early levels just to have a small number of pipes, smaller number of enemies, um, but also to have a level where you just have one pipe, and that pipe could be in a crazy place as well. So players have really got to fight over getting to it. Um, can make for an interesting two-player level, especially early on. Um, Good to test different things. Yeah, this this is exactly why um, I wanted to get the editor to do in. So I wanted to see what, what works and what doesn't work and, and what we can do to... Um, don't edit the original lines. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so can I level have tons of enemies, but you can just escape quick anyway, so it didn't make much of a that we're tons of enemies. I don't get what you mean. Oh, is it Foray who, who mentioned it? Okay. 
uh, they fall through the floor because they're spawning from a weird place. So it's actually it thinks they're it probably thinks they're in the the um, high area of um, like, like the MSB of sprites or something. So um, can a level have tons of enemies? But you can just escape quick anyway. No, you have to eat all the enemies to get through the door. So the switch doesn't act activate if um, if you don't eat all the enemies. I'm not sure I get what you mean. So you can exit through the door. If you eat fast, you have to eat all of them. Yeah, yeah, you do have to eat all of them. Um, okay. So in this case, we've created a level with two pipes missing. Uh, and we'll probably get the same effect. We'll probably get a weird pipe symbol up in the corner here. Um, no, we get something, but it's... And we'll probably see that the enemies start doing strange things. Yeah, see, they're disappearing. And this is because it doesn't quite know where they're spawning. Um, so they're doing... Yeah, they're doing this. Where, and this is probably because... This is the MSB point here, um, where you you pass over into the uh, the ninth bit of the sprite position. Um, so I think what's happening is is getting to that point, and or it might be here actually where this one disappears. There, um, it's getting to those points, and then the collisions going all wrong, and sprites are appearing in weird places. So, um, also, why is that there? Oh, I've messed around with the data there. That's why. Let me put let me put original map back in. There we go. Is it? No, I think it's. I think it's over this bit here. Oh, what? Oh, I've changed the tiles, haven't I? Oh, god damn it! All right, uh, let's go over that one. There we go. Yeah, so you can see here, it's it's trying to it's trying to spawn enemies, and they're spawning up here, but I think it's screwing around with the collision as well. Um, so we need to we need to do some checks to make sure that the the pipes are working properly. So even though we've got five pipes drawn on the map, only three of them will be active. Um, we just need to make sure that those three stay active. So okay, let's go to pipes and have a look. Okay, so we actually take a copy of the pipes. Um, somewhere in here because uh, we've got yeah here we go map data copy pipes so when we've copied the map data we can read this length value here if any of these lengths are zero then we can discount the pipes so let's put um a byte up here let's call it um pipe count and we're going to count the pipes at the beginning So this is where we copy the map data. And then as soon as we've done that, we can count the pipes. So so we're just going to load the data from pipe length and direction, comma x. If you have two pipes, will it still? No, it will spawn one per pipe. It will spawn one enemy at a time per pipe per screen. So if you've got five pipes on screen, uh, five active pipes on screen, then you will get five enemies at, at one time on screen. If you've got two pipes, then you'll just have two pipe, uh, two enemies on screen at one time, which is a good way to kind of make the levels a little bit easier earlier on um, and allowed you to kind of be a bit more symmetrical with some of the level designs as well. But five will be the maximum number of pipes you can have. Yeah, the pipe choice is random, yeah. Um, it would be tricky at this point to change that. Um, not impossible, but tricky. If we if we deem it needs to be non-random, then we can we can look at that. But um, I think for now we'll we'll keep it random. Um, I'm enjoying all this booze. It's nice. Okay, so. Um, if that value is zero, we're going to jump to here. Otherwise, we'll jump to this loop here. 
So actually we can just do it like this. Uh, I should do it like this. Start at FF, increase X here. There we go. So the first time round, this will be zero. And then when it's finished, we can... Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. Let's do this a different way. All right, we have to do it this way. Okay. So five is the maximum number. Otherwise, we jump back to here. So when we reach this point, So this could be zero if if the first pipe is blank, this could be zero, we come to here and the value would be zero. Otherwise it's going to increase. So the value we have in X here is our pipe count. Cool. Right. So now we have a value in pipe count. So now what we need to do, we need to make sure that when we um oops. When we check the pipes, um, we start at the, well, here by the looks of things. Max enemies on screen. Where's that? Is that in here? Max enemies on screen. Okay, so max enemies on screen is actually pipe count now. So, okay, so what we're going to do. Check the spawn timer. Yes. Check if there are less than five enemies. Okay. So we've got the total number of enemies here. Um, we'll check if a pipe is active, but we're only going to check from uh, pipe count. So I'm going to load Y with pipe count and decrease it by one, uh, which is going to be the equivalent of doing this basically. And then we need to compare that to pipe count do we have an inactive pipe so same thing here as well uh, if so spawn at random inactive pipe so here we pick in a random pipe to spawn at um, so this would be also pipe counts. Update pipe bulges. Uh, okay, so again, we can do this. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything left to do on here. I don't think there's any other loops in here that... Um, of that value spawn enemy from pipe all right let's try that hey spec homster so the bit of look now only three of these pipes will be active so that definitely seems to be the case and we've only got three enemies on the screen so that that was actually pretty simple so now let's try that out um, by copying that prg into here and giving our editor a run. So I need to open up the project in here. Come on. That's why I'm caught. I keep forgetting I've got this bloody aircon between my legs. You can always add walls on the sides if you want to map you can't wrap. Yeah, I am um, select wrapping. 
on, on, oh, I can't read what you put there. A wrapping or not? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> yeah, designer could have walls. So yeah, maybe we'll add that in next as well. We'll, we'll add some um, wrapping around the edges of the screen, which is... Uh, I'll have to have a look at what that's going to do, because we do have some screen edge detection on some of the enemy behaviours, but I don't think it should be that much of a problem. Okay, so let's load our example level in. And give this a try. So hopefully this just works now and we don't get the weird fall through that we were getting before. Okay, I've just thought of one thing we're definitely going to need. Actually, this is a good level for testing wrapping as well because of the screen edges. Um, so one extra check I will need to do in here, um, in my, not that one, this one, uh, where's the pipe check? If pipe count, yeah, so here we go. Because before it was checking if you had exactly five pipes, now it needs to check as long as you've got, um, Get rid of that pipe cap there as well. Unnecessary. Uh, will level also be shown on the screen like Luma? There isn't really any place to put that, unfortunately. But what I will do is I will keep a record of everybody who has contributed levels uh, and make sure that in any... Um, in any official release that you get listed, anybody who has submitted a level that get, makes it into the game gets their name in the um, in the printed credits uh, for any for any um, physical release. I mean, I think most people are going to be in the credits anyway, just um, in the in-game credits. Are all enemies worth the same points? It would be good if slightly different to them, I think. So if only two enemies left players have to choose which one to go for. That's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, we. Could, I'm, I'm going to make some notes of these things because these are really useful. Um, so, so screen wrapping. So at the moment, yes, the enemies are worth the same number of points, but we can we can easily change that. Um, actually, do we get? I can't remember if you get a points value when you eat or not. I think you do, actually. <laughs> yeah, physical release is definitely something I want to do. This is another uh, thing I've been discussing with um, Jamie from Bitmaps Off. Um, Okay, they just get plus 100 or minus 100. I, I think if you get them on normal ground, if I'm stood here, yeah, it just says nice. So yeah, we can we can definitely um, we can definitely add different scores. So I'm going to put different scores for enemies. This is the time to do it. I mean, this is what I said all along: is when we get to this stage. This is when we can start making the little tweaks that are going to make the game great. There's that fly again. I've been trying to get this fly for days. I actually smacked myself in the face the other day because I felt it land on me. And I went like that to try and get it and missed it. Get out of my wine. It's my wine. Fuck off. I'm almost a real coder. You can't actually fire through platforms. Um, well, can you imagine how difficult it would be to, to shoot this guy over here, for instance? I think being able to shoot through the platforms is probably all right. Face palm fly. Yeah, I've, <laughs> yeah. It's not the first time I've done that as well. I've done that more than once. Yeah, I think I I think if you 
restrict i mean it's easy enough to do um but then you're going to get into really tricky situations and uh it's actually because of the arc of the um the arc of the throw it's going to be difficult to hit them because even down here right you'd have to get very close to this guy to hit him um I think you should not be able to fire down through platforms. Well, you shouldn't be able to fire down through platforms because you've got the the the, the projectiles will always stop when they hit the white bit here. Um, so if you hit if you go through a wall like that at the side, then it will go down. Um, but it, I think it's I think it's restrictive enough that it's not. Um, It's not super easy to hit things, but um, it's not super, super hard either because uh, it could get ridiculous. Um, but I don't want to make it too hard. So I've upgraded my input to on the table. <laughs> means fly in Japanese. Maybe you can't normally shoot through platforms, but one of the power ups give you the ability. I'm, I'm not. I mean, if it comes to the, if if we start playing this and it feels like it's too easy because you can shoot through platforms, then I'll I'll consider it. But I I don't I don't think it really needs it at the moment. Um, there's a definite difference between um, a wall and a platform. A wall is just something that you can't walk horizontally through. You can jump up through it. If you can jump up through a platform, why couldn't you shoot through it? So, um, yeah. And as Andy says, this is why the game isn't finished. We've got to be careful that the things we add, um, are, are kind of necessary things. I think the screen wrap is definitely a necessary thing. Oh, I got it, but I flicked it. I've just stunned it. <laughs> Oh my god, I just launched it across my room by flicking it. Oh, well, at least it's passed out. Yeah, feature creep. So let's let's try and avoid that where possible and just stick to the things that really, really add to the uh, add to the experience. Um if during if during testing we decide Oh yeah, yeah, it's definitely good good to chat about it. Um but there's going to be things that I think are necessary and things that we should consider if the gameplay doesn't feel right. Uh, and I think the majority of the majority of things are going to fall into the second category until we really sit down and play it, um, especially in two player mode. We're not going to know um, which is which which stuff feels right and which one doesn't. Uh, thank you for the follow. Iron Ash 76. I'm not sure why I didn't hear that, but um, thank you very much for the follow. I'm so impressed. I, I I just flicked that fly into next week, but I know what flies are like. They're 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 pretty tough fucking things. So unless you splat them, they 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 stick around. So all I've done is probably knocked it over to the other side of my room, and it will wake up in twenty minutes. And oh, that's a different fly. I got that one there. Um, but yeah, no, no idea. It's a bad idea. I'm not. I'm definitely not saying that. But um, I do want to try and um, try and get this game finished this year. So um, everything we put in has to be weighed up. Um, I think the number of pipes thing was great, and that was a very easy thing to do. Um, and it's going to make the levels very simple. Um, you just won on Bob, and it didn't give you the points. Um, okay. What did you one three two? Okay. Uh. I think that's right. No problem. I do need to check on that. I'm going to make a little note on the back of my my books to uh, check race validation because 
you're not the first person to say that. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes the Streamlabs API goes wrong. So, AIDS Wolf. <laughs> okay, right. Let's uh, let's have a go at uh, wrapping screen wrapping. So let's start with the player then. So at the moment, when we reach the screen edge, I'm guessing we just stop. But all. <sighs> hmm. So, see, this is a little bit tricky because what we need to do is we we can take the cheap approach, which as soon as you reach the screen edge, you flick over to the other side, in which case there's a there's a whole kind of chunk of disparity that you know you you don't you don't appear half in one side and half on the other side. You you basically warp from one side to the other. Um, um, the other method is to walk into the border and then when you've gone completely into the border you appear on the other side so when when the last strip of pixels disappears on the left then a new strip of pixels appears on the right the problem with that is the collision so if you do that what happens is the collision checks are now going to check off screen somewhere they're going to check where it doesn't um it doesn't quite work so let's start with a warp and see how it looks we'll do it for the players first uh, and if it doesn't feel right, we can always, we can always, um, we can always go back, or we can try something a bit more complicated. So um, let's start with the players first. Okay, so um, okay, let's have a look what functions we've got in here because this is a massive file now. Uh, player one control we want. So. player control here we go right okay so we just have player control function which is good so we don't have to change this in two places so we've got left and is that checking that yeah so we check the screen edge here so what do we do we check the upper byte of player one X, if it's set, then we don't need to check the edge. Otherwise we check the lower edge and we check against the left screen edge, which I'm guessing that's all right. So let me, I need to get another post-it out here to write some stuff on. Okay. Bit of air wolf. So this is at line one, four, four, seven, but this is, this is, I think this is what we should probably spend September doing is getting these tweaks in. I think anything we want to tweak, we should, time box it to september if we don't finish it by the end of september then we we don't add it and then we spend october doing the rest thing so adding the the like finishing the bonus screen off adding the intro screen in um and then november we can start testing it's, it's probably going to be a bit close but um to getting it getting it done this year but i think we can do it i think we can do it if we're just a bit dedicated about it so all right, so this is set, I'm guessing, up at the top somewhere. Okay, so we've got these values here. So left screen edge, right screen edge, uh, and the actual values that they're set to. Okay, so in that case, what we can do, just go back to this line. <laughs> There's a one in five hundred chance that a helicopter spawns. That would be funny. There's also, I mean, there's some other other little polish things I want to do as well, um, which I I want to make time for. So one of the things is when the door comes out of the ground, I want little bits. I want to use the the sprites that are no longer being used. There's five free sprites when that um when that door spawns. So I want to use those five sprites to create little smoke things you know, think of the um think of the smoke behind mayhem when he runs that that kind of flashing smoke that around the base of the door as it comes out of the ground and the ground shake it'll just look a lot nicer quite quite simple um to add and, and would add a lot and the other thing i want to add is um oh god what was it yeah i can't remember there was something else i literally just thought of it and now I can't remember it. 
Uh, it'll come to me at some point. <laughs> What's today's? Today's booze is double. So we've got the uh, got the wine on the go. And uh, red leg spiced rum as well. I should add it into a hashtag. I should add it into uh, the wine thing. So, oh god, I can't remember what that thing was. No, it's it's completely escaped me. I'll, I'll remember it at some point. Uh, I think Steve did a little bit. I think he helped John with the music routine, but I, I think he was mostly a graphics guy. I don't think he did very much code. Um, <clears throat> oddly, um, Andy Roberts, who comes in the stream now and again, especially on the Thursday stuff, he did he did a bit of code for um, a few of the games. Uh, he helped out with some of the demo stuff that they did, and he, he did some stuff for the um, intro of Mayhem and stuff. Yeah, I love uh, what I really like about Steve Rowland's uh, music is the bass lines. I think his bass lines are brilliant. Okay, uh, okay, so we're going to check the screen edges. Um... So if we reach the screen edge, and we've hit it, then this is what happens at the moment. We just we just lock it to that position. But what we could do instead is we could wrap it here. So uh, this is the original behavior. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna duplicate that um, and just comment it out for a second. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store. Uh, Hang on, left screen edge. Okay, so I'm going to store right screen edge on that one. And set the MSB to 0, 1. Okay, so we're just going to try going off the left side of the screen and see how it looks now. If that builds. How's everybody Saturday been anyway? I'm not sure what I'm gonna play tonight. I'm kinda of torn between between a few different things. Um why is that not building? That's weird. Oh, oh shit, okay. Really? I didn't add any. Oh, I did actually add one extra lining. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, I, I mean, there's a skip up there as well. So I'm just going to call it. Uh, no, I'm going to call it skip 001. There we go. Spent the day installing a leased line for a company using pre-configured Dutch equipment for plug -in, for that plug and play doesn't fucking work experience. Uh, been building your retro pie station. Okay, cool. Are you doing that with the um with the the C sixty four build as well? Because that'd be really cool. If you if you get that working, that'd be that'd be cool to see. I think that'd be really nice. Because you. Could you? Yeah, you could actually. You could quite easily do that. I think that would work quite well. Yeah. Been playing Hell That Loose and sorting out my Thrust 30 build scripts. Get ready to work on an update. Oh, cool. New stuff for the updates or. I forgot what I'm tested though. Oh, yeah. Look. 
Okay, that that kind of works, I think. Let's let's take a closer look at it though. So let's let's see. Is it um, is it too jarring? Actually, that's not bad. That kind of works. Yeah, that kind of works. I like that. <laughs> I'd say I want to keep the CCFC based on Pyre Uh Okay, yeah, understandable. I mean, the... Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can switch out the SD card in it as well, so... Um, I mean, it's a little fiddly to get to, but you could, in theory, switch out the um, uh, switch out the um, SD card, and you should still be able to use the keyboard like a PC keyboard in 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 RetroPie. So, could you make him fidget if he stands around too long? Um, <clears throat> I couldn't because I'm terrible at drawing. But if somebody somebody had the time they could the, the only problem with that is we don't have many sprites left um and you'd have to create a fidget animation for each of the three um is it three yeah three weights so because the character has three different weights you would need to um you'd need to create a different animation for each one and we actually don't have that many sprites left so i i like the idea it is a good idea but um it might be difficult one thing we could do is make them blink. I mean, that's a, a quite a common thing, but I'm I'm not sure if that would work really as well. So, um, okay, I kind of like the wrapping, so I'm going to put the wrapping on the other side as well, uh, and then I'm going to copy the PRG into the level editor folder and try it on a flat surface. Because one thing you might notice there is that the the two sides are different heights, so the wrap doesn't quite work properly. Um, <clears throat> But let's go and put it in on the other side as well. So let's just copy that. And do that here. Uh, and this is basically the opposite. So this becomes zero. This becomes left screen edge. And that becomes commented. All right, let's build that. Let's drop that into... Why is that not built? Oh, let's see if I actually build the right thing. <coughs> okay, let's go and drop that PRG into here. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I kind of pushed back a little bit against the um, the screen wrapping, but I think it might actually be uh, a good idea. Um. It just adds an extra kind of level of um, decision making when it comes to, especially comes to two players. <clears throat> I've run out of my, I've run out of my bloody um, cider today as well, which is why I was drinking some wine. So, um, but this wine is going to run out very quickly. In fact, I, I can probably fill that glass up with the remainder of the bottle. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> so I'm down to rum now. Which is very nice, by the way. See, so it's uh, a vanilla and ginger. It says Caribbean. I don't know where exactly. Because Caribbean rum is just what they call it, right? I don't think it's necessarily from the Caribbean. It doesn't say where it's from. I mean, it says UK all over the bottle, but that's just uh, where it's bottled, not actually where it comes from. Uh, it doesn't actually say. It just says bottled in the UK. Maybe it is British. <clears throat> Made in Scunthorpe. Yeah. Oh, well, well, it's nice anyway, so... A T TTS is tired of life. Uh, did that actually load? Yeah, it did. Okay. <coughs> okay, so let's load our little test level in. <coughs> My God. I've had a weird day today. It's been ups and downs all day. Just very feeling strange and ugh. 
It's just a local one with the same colour, yeah. It probably is, actually. <clears throat> so that's, that's why I'm, I'm really glad to be streaming, actually. It makes me feel good to be back on. Oh, I'm not going off that side for some reason. Uh, but I can go off the other side. Okay, why is that? Let me go and have a look. Should have probably tested it before I went and jumped in and did all this. Uh, okay, so... Left screen edge play. Oh, well, this should be working. Oh, hang on. Player two. Oh, no, it is doing separate players. Oh, damn it. Okay. Okay, this, this should definitely have been uh, refactored. So this is one potential area. If I need to save some... <coughs> save some bytes, I can do some changes in, in here, but... um. Okay, so I'm going to have to change it again down here, and I yeah, thought so. All right. Oh, a bit of Night Rider. Who picked this one? This gives me so many warm, fuzzy feelings of the 80s, this tune. Very good version, actually. Is it just mirrors a C64 blue, blue, just not a nice, useful shade? Yeah, most people use the... Um... A-team. Most people use um, the the light blue, don't they, for Sky? It's not... It's it, You're right, it's not a great blue. It's a little bit too dark. Um, but it has its uses. Um, it actually doesn't doesn't look too bad in in the game because the game is quite a colorful it's supposed to be quite kind of an eclectic um mix of colors um it kind of works all right so oh not the relative jump all right on five two three So I can have another skip zero zero one and it's fine. Now, one thing I forgot to ask when I got my MacBook ordered for my new job was what what specs I'm getting. So I hope I'm getting a decent one. I don't want a shit one. They're shit enough as it is. I don't want. I don't want one that's. Oh, ah, right. Okay. So, um, because this this platform here is higher than this platform, you're going to need to make sure that if you are wrapping around, that you have matching platforms on each side, or else that's going to happen. You're going to end up being able to get stuck in places. Um, but other than that, I think this is all right. So let's um. And actually, the warp doesn't look that bad. I, I thought it was going to look really bad, but it doesn't look too bad. Um, and we'll try in a minute what will... In fact, I'm going to do it... Uh, let me do something. Let me load up the maps in here let me export a map with that that height difference fixed rather than keep messing around with the editor it's probably better to do it in here all right so let's fix that height you hope i get an i3 macbook air with four gig of ram and you felt the need to make me listen to that you're evil andy i better not get that well i've told them it's for running uh, multiple vms so I'd imagine it's going to have at least 16 gig of RAM, and I, I would hope at least an i7. Um, 
I really don't care if I get an i9 or not because I I know, um, with especially with the little because I'm pretty sure it's going to be the shitty little, um, Touch Bar Mac. It's not going to be an old one. So, um, I I'm I'm pretty sure I I I'm not going to get much benefit out of an i9 for VMs, and I'm just going to create a hotter, um, a hotter system. So I I think I'd be happy with the. Uh, uh, try and make this look half decent at least. Um, I think I'd be happy with the uh, the i7, but I think I I def think I definitely need an i7 for high hyper threading. Um, yeah, the i9 has more cores, but honestly, cores aren't that important for VMs. You're only ever using you're only ever using one VM directly at a time. You can assign one core to it. It's threads that is important, and if I get a six core i7, that's 12, 12 threads. That's going to be plenty um I, I think honestly i think the biggest concern is going to be memory and um and storage space as well a good ssd which actually is one good thing about the max is they do have really good ssds in them uh to give them credit um they're just fucking stupidly expensive to replace because because they won't let you use um your own um ssd you have to buy it from them or you have to have one that's compatible with their shit which basically means it's a normal NVMe SSD, but they've just changed enough stuff so that you can't... Um, hang on, why is that not right? Oh, it doesn't matter. Let's just save that. Um, 11. Um, yeah, you, they, they changed the pins around on the NVMe, NVME, so you can't actually just use a standard NVMe, even though it's the same. Um, Thing. But you can't even change it in the MacBook. Oh my god, that's terrible. That's one of the things with my Asus I made sure that I could do. I could change them out. So that's really bad. That's really, really bad. What? Seriously? Fucking hell. Honestly, Apple, this is why Apple pissed me off. They make stuff really hard for people. Do not make your life easy. <laughs> Thanks for the bit steps. That was a good one. I like that. Yeah, that's... I, man, that's... To be fair, Microsoft are doing it as well with the Surface Book. So yeah, I can't just diss Apple for that. I, I, but I, I honestly think Apple are the trendsetters when it comes to this thing because people see Apple doing it. People see... This is what happens with tech, I think, at the moment. People see Apple lead the way with pricing and with repairability. So what they'll do is Apple will release something that's kind of quite overpriced. Um, and then what other people... And, and very hard to repair. And then what other people will do is they'll look at that and go, well, obviously that works for Apple. That makes them money. So what we'll do... Oh, God. <laughs> Haze. So we'll do the same thing, and I think I think Microsoft have gone down that route as well. <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> Is that it? Yeah. Thanks for the bits, Hayes. God, I've really got to limit Hayes's TTS. Yeah, so I mean, as much as I, I think Microsoft has copied Apple, I don't think it's fair to blame Apple for Microsoft's uh, move there. Microsoft could have, you know, taken the high road and not done that, but they they did. And I think it, it basically comes down to if you've got a device that costs a thousand pounds or more um, and you can make it difficult to impossible for your average user to repair or upgrade it without going to um without going back to the manufacturer and the manufacturer not repairing it at the component level but saying we need to replace this or you may as well buy a new thing then of course you're going to make more money and apple have been doing that for years and they've got better and better out that's why they've started gluing things in that's why they have these battery warnings on the iphones and stuff um and i think i think just others are copying suit now and it's it's a sad state of affairs i, I mean i talked about it a little bit in discord i think once a company gets enough money they can just scam everybody. They can shaft everybody and be be horrible, horrible companies and get away with it. 
So I, it's unfair for me to just have a go at Apple there. I, I think they did kind of lead the way a little bit with this. Um, but, you know, companies don't have to copy Apple. Okay, so I'm going to try now. Um, so if you watch, look how if as soon as I get to the edge, I appear over there. So there is this kind of warp between the two sides. IBM if you want evil, yeah. Yeah, Samsung are another one, actually, that do the same. Um, but yeah, I, IBM did the same thing in the 80s with the IBM compatible stuff, didn't they, say? So, um, I mean, thankfully, that's all freaking stopped now. Yeah, Apple, Apple have become... What it is, is since Apple gained the kind of monopoly on a few things, they... it's Again, it's what I said in Discord. Once... Once you gain market dominance in stuff, um, you can start being kind of evil. Uh, and if as long as you've got something unique that others don't have, then you can get away with it. And for Apple, it's their design and their culture. Um, and they, they've got this kind of cult following now where, they, you know, they, they can basically polish a turd, call it the eye turd, charge £2,000 for it, and Apple people will buy it. There'll be a lot of people who will go, I'm not buying it. It's a turd. But there will be people who will buy it because it's got an Apple logo on it. And and it's as simple as that. They're, they've become a cult. They've become this kind of the thing that people can't touch anymore. It's ridiculous. And there actually, there aren't many companies like that, actually. Um... I mean, Google's got its problems, but Google is not like that at all. Google, if Google put out a bad product, people will will shoot them down. Apple can put some some shit out, um, and they'll still be applauded for it. Or they can do some really underhand things, like charging, you know, a couple of hundred dollars for a fucking set of wheels. Um, you know, just caster wheels. I mean, they're nothing special. You you buy an IKEA cabinet, a rollout cabinet. It comes with caster wheels. And I don't care what these caster wheels are like for Apple. They can't be that good that they cost whatever they cost. I can't remember how much it is. It's like four hundred dollars or something. Um, it's just crazy, yeah. But they're all they're all these companies are the same. It's just Apple have got a really good thing going because they've got a cult following now. They they can do no wrong. Um, and it's going to take some really, really big scandal for that to turn around. And there's been some scandals, and they still come through it. Like, um, all right, I'm going to I'm going to mess around with the the edge detection here and try and make it less um, things like um, the the whole um, slowing down a device after two years thing. Um, is pretty underhand, and they managed to get around it just by some clever PR. Um, they said it was to save battery life, but everybody knows that the reason they did that was to um, to sell new devices. Um, everybody knows that, but because of PR, the people who actually buy the devices don't see that. They they see it. Um, they see everything else. So, yeah, yeah. Microsoft Surface stuff is good, but again, like Apple, they they are very unrepairable. If they go wrong, then like so, I've got a, a Surface, but Pro or whatever it's called. So I can't remember what it's called. It's a Microsoft Surface book. And one of the keys, one of the butterfly switches is broken a little bit. So one of the keys kind of flaps up a little bit. It's still attached, but if you were to turn the keyboard upside down, then that key would hang off a little bit. Um, so I just looked into, could I get that tiny little piece of plastic, that tiny little clip, and you just can't do it. If you want to, if I want to fix that, I've got to buy a whole new keyboard. And the problem is, is you can't open the, the Surface book without destroying it. So basically, I'm screwed. If I want to replace it, I've either got to send it off to Microsoft and pay for a new keyboard, plus the labor for them to actually change it, which will be extortionate. I mean, we're probably looking at about 300 to 400 pounds for them to fix what is essentially a, a, a one pence plastic clip on the button. Um, it's stupid. Or the other option I can do is I can buy a broken second hand one. Um, which is probably going to cost me about the same anyway, and take the butterfly clip off it. So it's stupid. It is really stupid that they, they do these things. 
Um, it's one of the reasons I like to build my own computers as well. I, I have full control over what goes on and what goes wrong in it. All right, so I've changed the um, the off-screen values to these. I'm going to go for a smoke in a minute. I'm, I'm kind of mad about tech companies now. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's not actually letting me go off the screen now. Does it work on this side? No, okay. So I'm going to look into why that does that and see if we can get it um, so that I, I would like it so that the player goes like halfway off before he flicks over to the other side. I think what's happening here is it's finding the collision is saying, no, there's a wall there. There's, there's, a, there's a wall at that point and they're not letting me through. Um, but I'll need to do some checks just to make sure. Uh, all right, I'm going to be back in a few minutes, guys. I need to go and chill out with a cigarette. Um, <laughs> I'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Be right back. All right, I'm back. I think I know what's going on here. Yeah, okay. Okay, so what's happening here is the um, the collision is is picking somewhere else. So when you go off the screen here, this is no longer position zero that it's checking. It's checking position FF, which is going to be somewhere else. Um, so if I jump over it, it's fine. Likewise, on this side, it's going to actually be checking against this character here. So it's going to it's not going to warp, so I can jump over it and go across. So I just need to extend. Basically, when the collision is more than the edge, I'm just going to extend whatever's here. So it's as if this platform carries on all the way to the edge of the border on both sides should be easy enough to do um actually the the break made me think of something else which is is really a, um i think really bad practice for both google and apple um which is their the app store in app purchase thing so you've probably heard about epic and fortnite and having it removed from um, the ios store um now while i think the way apple has gone about this is really bad so i need to look at collision don't i um while I, while I think the way Apple has gone about this is completely, uh, sorry, Epic has gone about this is completely wrong. What I don't agree with is if I go on Deliveroo or I go on to um, Uber or something like that, I can order an Uber or I can order a Deliveroo using my credit card. So why is it different for an in-app purchase? And I think it's really unfair for Apple and Google to both take a cut of essentially um, when they've already taken a cut of the, you know, from, you know, developer costs and things like that. It, it just feels feels wrong, to be honest. Um, you, you know, they don't take a cut from, from Uber payments, so why should they take a cut from game payments? Uh, yeah, anyway. It is super greedy. And if you consider how much money um, Epic make, um, from that game. Um, I mean, there is an element of Epic wanting to make more money from it. So, so Apple take 30%, but what Epic have said is if Apple remove that requirement, then they'll reduce the, the prices by 20%. So Epic would stand to make more money out of it. However, 30% of all the money that Fortnite makes on iOS uh, for, through in-app purchase goes to Apple, which is in, in, incredibly greedy. Yeah, they do. Uh, that is that is the problem. But I think it's it, it the, the problem is that 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 kind of greed is is kind of in my eyes it's unethical. I think it's really bad that they should um, take thirty percent of somebody else's profits, basically. Um, Fortnite is free, so Apple would get nothing if DLC DLC was free for Epic. Well, they could make it a requirement that you have to purchase if you want to use in, in app. Um, if you want to use credit cards in app, then then you have to make the game purchasable. Then that way, they would still get um, they would still get money from the base installs, but they wouldn't get like the Fortnite makes its money from in app purchases, and for for them to to lose billions. Um, every year is just is crazy. Uh, okay, so we've got this collision stuff here. So this is what we need to check. So whenever we create this collision on the left and right, we need to make sure that we we grab that 
um, in a way. So, ah, here we go. So get collision point, utils get character at. Okay, so in the utils file, this should be pretty easy to do. Get character at X, get character at Y. Okay, so. I think all I need to do here is put some checks in here. So, uh, so first of all, I'm going to check if let's, let's just do some simple things in it here first. Let's just do this. So we're going to compare X to FF and if it is FF, uh if it's not we'll jump to here if it is ff then we're going to load x with zero and likewise we'll do the same on the other side so we're just going to make sure if the value on the x position wraps um, then it's going to lock to one side or the other Yeah, the app store doesn't run itself, but it's not like it's not like if they stopped taking thirty percent. I mean, just reduce it, just make it make it fair. If it's an in-app purchase, make it five percent or something. It's not like it's not like they have to. It's it's not like when somebody spends twenty pounds in Fortnite, um, or, or let's say let's say they spend a hundred pounds in Fortnite. It's not like that transaction costs Apple thirty pounds. It probably costs them less than a penny. It probably costs them next to nothing. Um, yet they will take 30% regardless. It should be, yeah, it should be something like that. It should be a, a couple of percent. Um, it shouldn't be 30%. And that, that is kind of ridiculous. So, all right, let's see if this has worked. So what I'm doing here now is I'm checking if I'm on this edge of the screen no it's still blocking me there okay so why is it blocking me there let's try the other side okay it works on that side so it didn't work on on the far side over there but it did work on this side okay so why is it not working on that side so it would be good to know what the values are at this point um so one thing we might try, because this is using uh, character positions here. So we could check, uh, we could just check if it's negative or not. So Uh, yeah, Steam, well, Steam is not, not exactly innocent either. Um, one of the things that annoys me about Steam is if you buy the, the digital, if you buy the physical game, although that's very hard nowadays, but um, it used to be you could buy the, the physical versions of the game for like £30 or the Steam version for like £40. It's like the, the convenience of having it digitally cost you £10 more um, and yet you didn't get a disc so it, or, or a manual or, you know, it's... It, they they all have their um they all have their issues yeah and it it does come down to somebody sets the price and everybody just follows basically um actually this is one area where epic is actually doing good things i think apple's cut is uh, epic's cut is a lot less i don't know the exact values but i think it's uh it's a lot less um okay so we've got it kind of working on the right side but not on the left side so i'm going to just try incrementing the uh the border checks on the on the right side a little bit so i'm just going to put the original values here so i can remember what they were because i'm going to mess around with these quite a lot and then on this one i'm going to do that And then I can change this to be that. Right, there we go. So this is now I'm checking the right edge now. Twelve percent. Yeah, that sounds that sounds more reasonable. I mean, I still think it's a little bit high, but um, it sounds reasonable. Oh.
that feels a lot better right okay so let's knock that side down a little bit so we've added 12 to this side so let's subtract 12 from this side so it'd be 0 8 on that okay anyway I mean, I, I kind of hope what Epic does has some kind of effect, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not banking on it, to be honest. Right, the other thing I need to check here now is if I start throwing while I'm off the screen here, what happens? Okay, so nothing happens on that side. That's kind of nice, actually. That feels pretty solid. Yeah, nothing breaks on that side either. Okay, that's good. So we've got player wrapping on this side now. Uh, let's try the other player. Just make sure it works for both players. Cool. All right, cool. Uh, it randomly corrupts memory. Yeah, I'm. That's what I'm concerned about. I don't think it will because I think, I think the um the the player uh, bullet routine actually actually does the same thing. It cuts off at this edge here. So because what you would see otherwise is if I shoot, um, if I jump in the air here and shoot, you would see the bullet appear on this side, and you don't. So I I think that's pretty good. I think that's actually stopping it. Um, so the player wraps now can we make the enemies wrap so to do this we're going to have to um, change the level up a little bit so let's go into the level editor and let's just remove some of this here um, let's leave that on that side and let's let's flatten this out a bit I, I, again I don't care what this level looks like this is just for testing purposes Um, we've only got three pipes working, so we may as well remove these two pipes here as well, because these ones aren't working. Okay, so we need this to work now with the enemies. So the enemies have a check screen edge routine, um, which is a macro, so we should just be able to change it in there. So let's just see what happens at the moment so the players now should be able to walk off the edges at the bottom as well safely um that's cool yeah uh, and player two player one can do the same oh I'm interested now to see what happens if I do this. Nice. So you can actually have fights with the uh, with the bullets as well. <clears throat> so I've got to play it. Uh, welcome to the stream, guys. Thank you for the raid, Worm Juice Dev. Welcome along, guys. Um, I don't think I've seen a raid by you before, so welcome along. Hope you're doing well. You've got Dev in your name, so that means you've been Devin, I guess. What have you been Devin? What have you been coding in and, and for? Thanks for the follow as well, dude. Uh, welcome along, raiders. Yeah, so I'm I'm Sharon 50k. I do uh, C64 dev, uh, and on Tuesdays I do some Game Boy dev as well. Um, tonight we're just doing some polish around, um, around our game that's been ongoing for over a year now. Um, we're just kind of, we've got a level editor and we're just working on trying to get that, um, that, you know, testing out some different levels and seeing, so seeing how it works. Uh, thanks for the gift sub again, Amok, and, uh, welcome to the subs, Fistmaster. You're too generous, Amok. 
Appreciate it, dude. Very much appreciated. You love the retro vibe. Cool. I'm glad you do. We're all about retro on this channel. Uh, the point is, Apple makes exceptions. I would try either. Yeah, exactly. There. That's that is my my point is that you can you can order an Uber and you can order a Deliveroo and you can do it all through your credit card and there's no need for an in app um, purchase. So, speedrun and multiplayer. Oh, cool! I really like the speedrun game. So there's been a kind of a spate of them at the moment. So I, I'm kind of I'm kind of really digging them at the moment. Um, I've probably, I may have seen some of your stuff on Twitter. Maybe do you post, do you post kind of the odd stuff on Twitter here, here and here and there? Um, cause I've seen a couple of speedrunners on speedrunner games on, uh, on Twitter. So, um, maybe I've seen them on there. Okay. So we, we want to get the enemies wrapping off the screen as well. Um, not on Twitter, just Twitch. Oh, Okay. Well then, yours is in you. I'm gonna follow you then, because I need to. I need to check out these speedrun games. Let me find you. Where have you gone? There you are. Um, I'm gonna figure out how to get to people's channels. Oh, there we go. There you go. You got to follow from me, dude. I should be I should be checking your stuff out after the stream because uh, I I really like those sort of things. So thank you very much again for the raid and and welcome along everybody. It's come along with Worm Juice Dev. Yeah, so we we're just implementing a few extra features. So th this game's been ongoing for a while, um, and we've just just re I've just released the editor for the levels, um, and realised as we've released the editor, there's a few extra things that would be nice to add into the game. So uh, we're just working on screen wrapping at the moment. So you already wrap when you go off the top of the screen and off the bottom, um, but there wasn't a wrap on the on the left and right. So we've just added that in for the players now, and that seems to work fine. Um, just want to do the same thing for the enemies, because at the moment the enemies um, will walk right to the edge of the screen. Actually, I think I might need to just bring in those edges a little bit because you can you can almost hide off the edge of the screen not quite but i'm going to bring them in a little bit because um so i'm just gonna two pixels either side okay let's have a look at the enemy behaviors so we've got these enemy macros uh, these are what we're going to be using for uh checking the screen edges and there we go screen edge here um why can't I scroll it? Oh. Uh, interestingly, it's not checking. It's not checking the screen edge in in the same way as it's checking the player screen edge. So we probably want to change that. Um, the collision is using the same method, I believe. Get enemy collisions. Let's go and have a look at that. Uh, Get enemy collisions no where's the actual method for it here we go get character at yeah so we're still using that same method so that means we can probably um probably make the same changes here uh that we do on the other one so what we need to do here now with screen edge is not actually check if we reach the screen edge but um to to flip well, we still need to check if we reach the screen edge, but we need to flip if we hit that screen edge. So at the moment, this is done by um, checking left and right individually, and we're doing this comparison here. So we can actually compare that against the player left screen edge and player right screen edge, so we, we don't have to have this hard-coded value in here. Um, so I'm going to comment the line out because I don't want to break anything, so I'm just going to leave the original code in until um, I know it works. So we're going to check against the left screen edge here. Um, if we do hit the left screen edge, um, then what we need to do is instead of changing direction, which is what we do here, and then return, um, we're just going to change the enemy position instead. Um, and that should be pretty easy. So I'm just going to comment that out. I'm just going to do it on the left side first and check it, and then we'll check it on the other side as well. Um, you probably know the old 80s games. Oh, hang on. I've lost the chat. Let me see. My chat doesn't work very well on my uh, on my main screen here, so I have to check it in here. 
Uh, you probably know the old 80s game, Mr. Robot. Yeah, it definitely, uh, definitely rings a bell. So this game is is kind of heavily based on uh, Bubble Bobble kind of Parasol Stars kind of games, those single screen arcade platformers. Uh, the idea is is you um, let me just let me just launch it. Well, let me just put this bit in, and then I'll explain it while I play it. Um, so we want to put one in the MSB, and then in the low byte, you need to put the player. Right. Right screen edge, there we go. Okay, let me start that and we'll come back to that. So I think now the enemy should walk off the left side. Ah, <laughs> bit of bubble bubble. So the idea is, and it's it's probably not very apparent because I'm I'm only playing on this this temporary level here. Okay, they they appeared in the wrong place, but the idea is is you you shoot these uh, kind of sugary kind of enemies, um, and that causes more to appear out of the pipes, uh, along with bonuses as well. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to do. I wanted to add better bonuses in. Um, so I the the, the moment the the power ups are just vials of coloured liquid, I want to add icons to them. So what you do is you stun an enemy like that. Once it's stunned, it can't hurt you. And then you can eat it by absorbing it. So you, you do that and you get fatter. And as you get fatter, you fill this bar up at the bottom, which is the eat meter. Uh, and then when you fill that up, I can't eat that now because it's it's bugged out because of the thing. But um, when you get fat enough, you can stand on this switch, which you can see here, it doesn't fully depress right now. Um, but when you when you eat the last guy, which hopefully this guy is going to walk over here and I can actually attack him again. No, he disappears. So this is a little bug we need to fix. Um, you've, you'll be able to, this switch will start flashing. Uh, then you can stand on the switch. No, he's bugged out. Uh, and the door will appear and you can walk through the door. So it's, uh, if you call the left edge, it should probably wrap around the other side. So yeah, that's not going to happen for me. That, that would be... Yeah, no, that that would. Well, technically, you're correct. I think that is going to be way too much of a um, technical implementation there as well. Yeah, well, yeah, they did. I I think the wrapping is is wrong um, in here. So I just need to look at it. Uh, okay, so this is the comparison that we're doing. We're checking if we reach this left screen edge. Um, if we're more than that, we go to done. Otherwise, we come here. Um, and we should be setting the positions. This should be correct, but for some reason it's not set in that position correctly. It seems to be set in something else instead. Let me just let me just remove this two line and don't change the MSB and see what happens. In fact, let me put a break point in there as well. It'd be good to just see if we actually reach that point correctly. screen shake yeah it feels feels really good i like i like the screen shake it's uh it adds a lot to it i think need a hash no i think that's right this isn't a co it, it's actually is it a constant maybe it is a constant Oh, yep, you're right. Sorry, you are right. It is a constant. I've made it capitals. I should freaking know that by now. Which also means that these... Oh, hang on. Have I made a mistake in player? Or have I done it correctly in here? Thanks, Carlton. 10 AMK points to you. Oh, I have done it right in here as well. Okay. Well spotted. Well spotted, my man. Okay, so that's, that's that problem sorted. So I can probably change that as well now. Oops. Okay, that should mean that they wrap around now. And good evening, Carlton, indeed. Yeah, welcome along, dude. I'm feeling really good tonight. I think it's the rum. I was having a really shitty day today, but the, the seeing you guys again and the, the rum has really perked me up, man. Oh, 
Oh my god, another airwolf. <laughs> it's mostly the rum, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I honestly at the moment, you guys, um, uh, streaming is helping me a lot. Streaming is really helping take my mind off things, so it's pretty good. Uh, and unfortunately, the situation is pretty shit, so um. You know, he, just little things like, um, yeah, the, like the COVID lockdown has meant that what should be a fairly routine kind of week for me, um, with regards to like a funeral and stuff like that, I mean, it's it's almost impossible. I may not even be able to go. So, I saw you were originally from Radcliffe. Yeah, I saw you were from Ramsbottom as well. Yeah, so I, I. I'm from Radcliffe, yeah. Grew up, grew up in Radcliffe. Well, actually, I was I was born in Great Yarmouth, uh, and then I moved up north when I was about seven, and and spent most of my childhood, uh, the rest of my childhood, sorry, in in uh, Radcliffe, yeah. But I know Ramsbottom, yeah. I know it, I know it well. So, well, I wouldn't say well, but I, I do know of it, and I've been there a few times. Okay, so it looks like the wrapping on the left is working, so we just need to do the wrapping on the right. And then I think we're pretty much done for the uh, the enemy wrapping. So this is just the opposite, basically. So we set zero on the MSB, and we change this to left. Uh, we should be done there, and we just need to comment that out. So it looks like we actually save a couple of bytes there as well, which is kind of nice. <laughs> I did get a room upgrade indeed, yes. Yeah, yeah. Grew up in Radcliffe, and to be honest, I couldn't wait to get out. Radcliffe is is not the nicest place in the world, um, but you know, I, I've got good memories of it. I, I've got lots of friends up there, um, so it's it's kind of it's kind of cool. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Really, I should have let these let these guys spawn out. Oh, damn it! All right. Unfortunately, these these guys just kind of run along on the platform. The only thing they do is if you were in if you're in front of them, they will run towards you like that. But I think that's it. So there you go. And now I can press the switch. Um, all right, let me restart the level and see if we we need to see a guy walking off the right hand side. How did you get two jokes then? Yeah, I don't know if is a typical nothing English town. It's got its problems as well. I mean, I've not been there for... Oh, God, it must be... It must be coming up to 15 years now since, I, since I've been there. So I couldn't tell you um, if it's still got the problems it had. But it had a serious kind of drug and crime problem when I was there, so um Thanks WMG Stove, thank you for the uh raid. Uh sleep well dude. And yeah, I'll I'll be checking out your uh your VODs uh soon because I'd I'd love to see what you've been up to. Um so yeah thanks thanks for the raid dude and I hope to see you again. Come on, will one of them walk the other way, for God's sake? All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a block in the middle so they turn around. Um, so let's just stick this in the middle. Uh, just so that one of them will at least turn around. Well, if they're walking along the bottom, they're going to turn around, aren't they? So it should be fine. Uh, just walk that. So that's screen wrapping. Different scores. Um, yeah, I guess we can do that in a second. That's quite easy to do as well, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, that should be pretty easy to do, I think. The drug and crime problem left with you. <laughs> Nice one, Carl. I'd I'd hate to find out that that was the case. That as soon as I left, it just became like super gentrified, and 
and um and like ultra nice, but I, I doubt it somehow. David Whittaker's from Berry, no way. No way. Never knew that. That's that's cool. Oh, okay. What is going on here? Ah, shit. Okay. So now we've got a different problem. The check screen edges is also checking for walls. So actually the the behavior does need to, and this is a good reason that I I kept that uh, code in place because we're going to need this bit of code here. Uh, Cause here it's check. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So I need to change this slightly. So that's a good test actually that we've got in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to call this. I'm going to call it change done there. And then here I'm going to jump to uh, change done. And then I'm going to keep the change direction in here. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so let's do the same on this side as well. Let's uncomment that. Yeah, so I went to school in Bury. I, I went to the grammar school in Bury, which I know seems weird. Like I, I would go to grammar school, but I did. Went to an all boys grammar school in Bury. Hated every minute of it, but you know, that's that's life. That's growing up. Who who actually enjoyed school? Walking circles with space in So, oh god, I need to read that. I can't read it on that chat, unfortunately. Walking circles with base and base with news him as a musician. You could probably know. So, it's a bit an image, you know. That's so cool. Mary Poppins chimney sweeps and all dance around that. How all fancy and such. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I, I very much doubt that somehow. Radcliffe was a shit old. Berry's not that much better, to be honest, but Berry's a bigger, bigger town, so it has a kind of a wider spread of things. Whereas Radcliffe was just a kind of tiny town which um which had its has it had its issues. Okay, now they appear to be spawning on this side rather quickly, uh, disappearing on this side. So let's check. On this side they walk off quite a bit, but on this side they So watch as they go off this side, they they appear over this side very, very quickly. Yeah, far too quickly. Okay, so we need to look at that. So when they're walking off to the uh, to the right, so checking right, here we go. Ah, because we're, we're doing this here, which is not what we should be doing. We should be comparing this to player.right screen edge. There we go. And that should fix that problem, I think. Yeah, so I, I was born in Great Yarmouth, lived in Lowestoft, which is... Um, I, I say this all the time. I know it's the most boring piece of fact that you'd ever know, but it's a quiz quiz fact that you might need at some point. It's the most easternly town in Great Britain. So um, that's Lower Stoft. Great Yarmouth was just up the road to the north. I was born there, lived there till I was about seven, and then I moved up to uh, Manchester because my mother needed to be nearer to the family. Um, because the family all lived in, in, um, in Manchester. My dad lives in Bolton or lived in Bolton. Um, so I know Bolton as well, or Bolton, as somebody from Bolton might call it. Okay, that jelly bean seemed to have a problem then. I don't know what happened there, but he... Okay, I'm going to... Yeah, you see it? See that? So I need to check what's happening with the jelly bean guy. We may just need to tweak the, the behaviors a little bit. So let's watch for the jelly bean guy where he appears. And see what happens to him. Okay, so he's here. And he didn't walk off the screen. Ah, 
I know why. So the reason the jelly bean guy did not walk off the screen is because he's not actually checking for walls. He should be checking for walls. Um, so I'm just going to add that into his behaviors. So if we're going behaviors, uh, oh, it's, it's separate behavior something now. Okay. So let's take one that does change at the screen edges. Uh, so color bottle, let's have a look what it does. So it basically does it. Okay. Change direction like that. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at jelly bean. So the jelly bean. Uh, okay, I'm going to do it after all of these. I'm going to do it here. No, actually, that doesn't feel right. Changed. Oh, no, it is. It's doing it there. Okay. Oh, okay. We can just, we can just add this into, uh, into up here. Okay. So. So just before the jump done, we'll do another check here and we'll do the same on this side. Okay, that should hopefully make the jelly bean guy actually walk properly across the screen now. Yeah, I, I also think so as well. So we've only made two relatively minor changes here, but um, I think they will allow us to make much, much more kind of varied maps. So jelly bean guy, oh no, he gets, he kind of gets stuck on that side. Okay, he's stuck in a weird loop around here now. So, Jelly Bean Guy changes directions when the floor beneath him stops being colorable. So, what this the effect this has is he walks to the edge of platforms, turns around and goes back, whereas the Cola Bottle walks to the edge of platforms and just drops off. Um, oh, also, why did that happen? I want to see if it's the Cola Bottle if I'm hitting the Jelly Bean here. Interesting. Okay. Don't be mean to a jelly bean. <laughs> I have to keep scrolling up because I'm getting a, uh, I'm getting terrible kind of, can't wall in the jelly bean. Yeah. Why? Why is that jelly bean stuck there? That's what I want to know. And why is my my collision detection so shit over that side of the screen? So it's fine there. It kind of seems fine. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Um, oh yeah, I I should do that more often actually. In fact, let's let's do that. I can do that here, kind of. Let's have a look. Uh, okay, so I could use uh, branch if not equal here because that's definitely non-zero. Um, yeah, I can definitely do that, and I can do the same up here as well. But yeah, you're right, it saves a bite, it's a, it's a good thing. It's just a bad habit I've got into, I guess. Uh, oh, your code is better. Oh, I don't know about that, Carlton. I hate it. to be honest. This is some of the messiest code I've done as well. It's it's really not pretty at all. Um, I I much prefer the stuff I've been doing on uh, Checkanoid. Checkanoid feels feels like I'm writing it in a, a much more methodical approach, whereas this feels very very messy. It's uh, it, it's difficult sometimes to follow what I've done. Yeah, that's uh, that is one of the problems actually. Is if you do if you do change anything here, like if I did this here now, then this is going to break. Whereas a jump wouldn't break, so you do have to be careful. But um, I've kind of gotten all right. This is one of the reasons I I put these white spaces here, and this is the same in any language really. It's because I like to look at each kind of 
logical chunk of code as a separate block like that. So, so when I look at this and I make a change in here, I'm going to read all of this to work out exactly what it's doing. Uh, so I'll read this and I'll know that this is actually doing a branch instead of a jump uh, to save a byte. Um, so if I did make a change in here, I would be aware of this line because of the way I've, I've added the white space in, uh, which is why you'll see that a lot through my code. You'll see things in kind of logical blocks like that. Okay, so what is the jelly bean doing? So the jelly bean is... Actually, this is pretty easy. So I think all I need to do is I need to move this check um, to here, basically. So it's the first thing I check. Rather than being the last thing I check, it's the first thing I check. Um, so again, I'll do it here. And I think that should fix the jelly bean guy, hopefully. No one puts jelly bean in a corner. Yeah, readability. Readability is the main reason I, I tend to divide things into blocks, but it's also because I like to think about things in logical chunks. So like here in my, my entry point, um, I mean, I could probably group these together, but you can see it's, even though it's really simple code, I've set background and border as one block, the multicolor values as another block, sprite values as another block, disable interrupts, banking stuff, like, you know, just... I, I like to put things in blocks. I just make things a little bit easier to deal with. And and honestly, you need all the help you can when it comes to readability and assembly. Um, yeah, correct. Left edge could easily be zero. It's a risky choice. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be zero because... Um, I'm trying to make sure that the left edge is actually when the sprite's half off the screen. Um, so it should only really be 12 at most, but um, yeah, it's, it is, yeah, you're right. But um, it was taught to never use jump there, but because it's meant to be ZA to run the head shot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Z80, Z80 coders do have that advantage. This is another reason I'm looking forward to doing full 5GS10 because that's going to have on the Mega 65 because that's going to have... Um, I need to restart. I need the jelly bean to appear at the bottom. Oh, actually, it's only going to it's only going to happen if he appears here. So, um, yeah, for uh, 4510 or the Mega, the, the, uh, the, the Mega 65 version of 6502 the the advanced version has the uh branch always instruction so you can just use bra instead um yeah i'm do you know what though <laughs> in z80 you need to save those cycles you absolutely need to save those cycles um so you need to use a jump relative when when you were um, in, rather than a jump um rather than a jp because they they absolutely they absolutely um need to save all the cycles because doing anything else takes millions of freaking cycles uh okay i need to keep running this until i get that on that side Left edge is 12. What happens with the NES version? I think we lost we're a lot more platform agnostic these days. Yeah. I, I do want to do a NES game. So somebody mentioned it. I don't know who mentioned it in chat, but somebody mentioned potentially doing, when I'm finished with Gameboy.Cosmos, doing um, .Cosmos for the NES. And I really like the idea of doing that. So I might do that. How many levels will this game have? I think I can get 50 in, no problem. Um, I'd like to get 64, and I definitely think it's possible. Come on, Jelly Bean, appear at the bottom, for God's sake. Nope, oh, for God's sake. Right, okay. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the other way and copy the PRG from here, drop it into the editor, and we'll make a specific level in here. Okay, so... You need to try. It. Have you not played Dark Cosmos yet? I think you might like it. It's um, it's interesting. It's my first kind of full, fully released game. I, I'd done a lot of things before then, but it's the first one I'd properly released, and it's been very well received. Um, why is that not loaded? 
Oh, there we go. Oops. Um, it contains a lot of my love for kind of demo effects. So the 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 timeline transition effect is very demo esque. Um, that seems to be what people love about it. So I'm quite pleased. It got game of the year on freeze as well, which surprised me quite a lot because I thought there were some pretty decent games that year as well. So. Um, so I was quite happy to see that. Um, I, I don't know why I'm trying to write a, a do a like crazy good level. It just needs to be something um, just to test this out, really. So let's just put some crap in here and see where we end up. It's always fun watching people play it as well because I get so mad with with how um, how bad some people play it. <laughs> Uh, just because they don't know, like, I mean, obviously you know yourself, Carlton. When you when you make a game, you you kind of know all the little tricks and tips to get through a level quickly. So, um, which I should have just done this, you know. But, um, so watching people kind of take the long route around things kind of annoys me a little bit. But yeah, what what are you gonna do? Uh, player one, player two. What am I missing? Oh, I'm missing a switch. Okay, uh, switch. So one thing I, I've definitely noticed here is I probably need to make a version of this switch that that has um, uh, that that doesn't have the um, the gap underneath like this does. All of these switches have gaps underneath, so I might have to use. I've got like one, two, these ones here are free as well five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, I yeah, I can do, I'll probably do a couple more switches as well. My wife testing iOS millimodes made me rethink all my decisions. <laughs> Yeah, Elite had millions of star systems. No Man's Sky is really impressive. I, th I think in terms of procedural generation, No Man's Sky is the epitome of that. I think it's it wasn't a very well-received game. Um, I think it was overhyped. It's a lot better now if you play it again now. Um, but I think the procedural generation they used was absolutely outstanding. Oh, and I didn't put any enemies in, did I? Damn it. Okay. Uh, what do I want? Jelly beans. So let's put five jelly beans in and let's try it out with just three pipes as we want to test that right so let's let's just try it out with three pipes i don't think they did over promise they they've pretty much um they pretty much implemented everything they said they would implement the problem is is sony forced their hand and made them release it quicker than they they should have done but if you look at the game now it's pretty much got everything in it they promised so yeah i, I think no man's sky is really good now really really good oh that's not gonna work either uh okay i need to move the pipes so they appear over the ground instead so let's just add two in let's add one here and one here uh do we need a specific vice version for the editor level editor uh no you shouldn't do it should work with any um but you won't you might need to change the path to your um vice uh the details are in the discord channel on how to do that there we go right so we're looking for it going off this side correctly i think it should do ah no see they're getting stuck still yeah, there's something still not right. Oh, hang on. Check screen edges. We're doing that in the change direction as well. That shouldn't not be there. Check left. 
Ah, uh, okay, yeah, I'd put that in the wrong place. Okay, so this should be there. Hang on, check left. Does a bit. And then branch of equal, check right. So it should be here. Okay, let's try again. Will this game get a cart release? I think it might do, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd really like it to be a pick and mix cart as well. No, oh, they're still getting stuck on the edges. Why are they getting stuck there? Right, so what's happening? They're changing directions, then they're immediately changing directions again. Are they checking both directions? They are checking both directions. They should not be checking both directions. So actually this should be, yes, should be going to check. Oh no, they're not. Jump done, jump done. Okay, so that should be fine. But they're not updating position. So then the next frame when they come in. Uh, okay, so I need to do it after it walks. Okay, so. Like so. Oh my god, this is. That's why I'm going to block it out again there. So. Update position. So whenever it does a walk, it then as soon as it's done a walk, it needs to check its position. And decide whether it needs to turn around otherwise what it's going to do it's going to get to the edge it's going to set it, the new position over here and then the next time it's going to check and go oh i need to flip back to here again it's just going to keep doing that whereas this way it's actually going to have to have moved first before it does the flip so it's just it's just the order that things are done in here so no it still gets stuck on the screen god damn it Okay, right. Let's let's edit this map a little bit in here so um we always get it appearing on the bottom. Okay, that should make it always appear on the bottom. Did I do that right? Export. This is all we need. If I fix this one, I think it will fix them all because I'm going to have to try all the different enemies out as well um, to make sure that they behave correctly when they hit the, edge, they hit the edges of the screen. Oh, why do I keep exporting image? I'm going to go for a break in a minute. Pardon me. Oh, you put new worlds in it. Okay, cool. Are you sticking to the C sixty four style graphics, or are you kind of are you up in the the color resolution or, or resolution at all, or are you kind of sticking with roughly C sixty four graphics and just kind of having um, Unity style kind of sprite handling instead of C sixty four sprite handling? Millie Molly meat dinosaurs. <laughs> I should do. I, I mean, I did do a couple of mobile games, but I got so disheartened with the the need for marketing on there that I just kind of I, I stopped kind of caring about it anymore. Okay, right. Let's see what happens. So, yeah, it gets stuck on that edge, doesn't it? That's so irritating. So one thing I can do is I can make the enemies transition a little bit quicker. That might actually help. So um, let's try just changing that in here first. Because if that works, then I'm, I'm happy to leave it like that. 
which is basically just a matter of, of changing these values here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add four pixels to, to each edge here. Um, so it's going to be adding four on that side. It's going to be taking away four on that side. Um, oh, hang on, hang on. Is it as simple as when I reach the edge and I spawn on the other side, spawn minus one? Because I've got fractional movement. Oh, I might need to do this on the player as well. I bet that's what it is, you know. I bet if I do this, it'll fix it. Because I've got fractional movement, if something moves slow enough, then the next time it checks, it's still at the same screen edge value. I bet that's what it is. I'm going to have to do it on the player as well. Not, not that the player, the player doesn't actually have a value less than one. Um, no, it's still stuck. Um, I'm going to try just changing that value a little bit though. So this is enemy macros. All right, let's do it in here. So and then I'm going to go for a break after this one, I'll figure it out after that. I'm kind of enjoying this tonight. I'm enjoying the I'm enjoying the little tweaks and I really want to get this level editor spot on, so oh man. Wait, is it not flipping direction? Is that is that the problem here? Is it Ah We're changing direction as well here. So what I should be doing instead is this so we're just going to jump ahead a little bit to here otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to set the frame and i don't know what the accumulator is there so i'm just going to jump to done i think the accumulator will be 16 but i don't trust it so i am going to use a jump here sorry carlton uh that, yeah this is what it is it's it's changing direction twice so God damn it, that's actually kind of obvious when I think about it. Uh, so enemy frame 21 here. Yeah, okay, that's going to work now. So I'm actually going to go and flick these back down to... to um, where was the other one? Plus two. Where's my plus two? There it is. This is going to be it. This is definitely going to be it. A <laughs> load of the game. Yes, that's so. This game has been designed from the beginning as a as a two player game. Uh, in fact, many of the mechanics have been have been kind of figured out as two player, and then I've had to kind of retrofit them into single player. So, like this this floor coloration thing is a two player thing. Um, there we go. Perfect. Um, because basically you get bonus points if the floor is your color um, at the end. So there's always going to be a fight to kind of color the level with your with your color. Um, but I realize in single player that has no purpose. So now what happens is if you if you absorb an enemy over this side, so if I absorb this enemy on Y, I just get nice and I get a, a few points. Whereas if I absorb an enemy on my own color, I get a plus 100. If I absorb an enemy on... Uh, oh. Uh, he spawns in a weird place. So now I'm player two, but I'm stood on player one's color. So if I absorb this guy now, I get a minus 100. So I actually get less points um, and the other player gets some points. So there's a, there's a whole reason for for it, but it still means something um, in single player as well. Uh, also, one of the things we need to do, and I might do that actually after the break, because I think I've got player wrapping now. Um, actually, I'll test the other enemies. And then when I've tested the other enemies, I'm going to add in the um, clearing of these these things in back to white again as the enemies walk over them. So um, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to pour myself under the rum because this rum has taken me ages to drink. And we'll go ahead and add a few more tweaks in. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. So, all right. Be right back in five minutes, guys. Be right back. And I'm back. That was strange. There's a guy, there's a T-junction about 
50 meters away from me there's a guy doing circles around the t-junction on a like push scooter thing um shouting really loud while he's on some kind of hands-free i guess hands-free conversation but i can hear everything he's talking about um very weird Oh, technically, you could do this as well. So you could steal an enemy through the wall. Let me try and set this up. Okay, so if I do this here, and I come down here and shoot him, I can... Oh, no, I can't. Not quite. I can't quite reach. If that wall was thinner, I'd be able to absorb him. That's going to be tough to slip an enemy up for extra points. Oh, hang on. My, my chat gets cut off. Some extra points if they clear the colour under them. Oh, yeah, that's... Well, no, because it's if you're stood. It's not what the enemy's on, it's what you're stood on. So if you're stood on it, um, then it's fine, so... See, this is an impossible level. So uh, we need to... <laughs> I, I, there's no way I can get to that door now, so... <laughs> So we need to make sure that that's a thing as well. So this is why I need to verify every every level. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's crack on with let let's do that. Uh, oh no, we need to check the enemy behaviors. So let's copy this PRG into um, into the editor uh, and work through that it's going to be easier to, to work through the editor than it is to work through um, okay this should just work from here I think so uh, what am I checking so I'm, I'm checking that things move off the screen left and right correctly so I'm going to add another pipe in just so we can do well I'll add another two in actually so we can check more enemies at a time uh, and I'm going to I'm going to drop all the enemies in uh, I'm going to see how they work Yeah, I, I mean, ideally, if you submit levels, I, I'd like it if you tested your levels as well. I mean, I am going to test every level anyway, um, but it would be really handy if you could actually check your levels as well, because um, it's not going to be easy to check every single level. Um, if Well, it, I mean, I'm going to have to check every level, but if there are problems, it would be good if um, you guys could actually do some work to kind of limit how much extra shit i need to do okay so uh these flying guys are not moving off screen okay so let's see what candy guy does can all the enemies travel through the smallest tunnel size one char height uh he, ooh, good question i don't know um let's let's see let's see okay so so marshmallow guy can jump through the screen that's good um candy cane guy th i think can as well um i didn't actually see what he did yeah candy cane guy can um So the two flying guys definitely can't. Also, that, that crown is in a bad place there. I mean, you can still pick it up, but that was in a bad place. Okay, so the little gumball guy should jump eventually. There he goes. Does he walk off screen? He does. Perfect. So the ones I need to check now is gumball guy, uh, gum, gummy bear and flying guys definitely need a change. So... Can you do a flag making sure the level's submitted? The thing is, I'm not doing a submission through any kind of interface. It's just people are just going to submit them to me in, um, uh, through the chats. Yeah, I mean, maybe I could. That's what I did on Luma. So you couldn't submit a level on Luma unless it was completable. Um, yeah, maybe. 
the thing is, I I need to check every level anyway. It's it's not like I'm just going to drop these levels in without thinking about them. I want every level to feel like it fits the game. So every level is going to be curated, and and we're going to make sure it kind of works properly. So. I think I just spotted a weird bug then. Um, I mean, it's not a huge issue, but... Right, please be the gummy bear. Hopefully this is the gummy bear guy. Get over this side. I think it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, so does gummy bear walk off? Um, no. Okay, so gummy bear needs fixing. So let's do that one first, because I think that's going to be the easiest one of, of the lot. Um, so let's go and change the map data in this one to, to deal with that. So, uh, map data. Okay. So we need, let's get my sprite list up so I can see what the actual, oh, actually, no, I don't need that. Do I, I need, uh, behaviors, behaviors, behaviors. There we go. Okay. So, uh, saucer, gummy bear and boil sweet so uh enemy one enemy four and enemy eight so one four eight and i'll just put another gummy bear in as well eight there we go Yeah, maybe maybe I do need to make the the levels submittable through some kind of web interface, and then and then that way. I mean, there's a lot of verification in there anyway. Um, but the problem is, is I'm I would still I would still have to record something from Vice. So the moment you test the levels through Vice. Um, Okay, so this is a perfect test. All right, let's go for gummy bears then. Um, so I don't think it would be that easy. I think I'm just going to have to test each level individually. Um, I can always turn off all the enemies just to make sure the level you can actually get to it. But I think it'd be pretty obvious if you can get to it or not. It is an MSB issue. Yeah, it is. That's exactly what's happening there. Um, he's basically hitting the edge of the screen and not changing direction properly. So um in here I, I basically need to do the same thing that i've done with the jelly bean which is um make sure that um when he hits the edge of the screen where is it i do this check screen edges thing here um like so so i just need to do the same thing in here and this is probably taken um from the jelly bean anyway so i can probably look at the code so after update position uh which is here so i just do that basically uh and then i just need to make sure that the frame is correct uh set enemy frame 21 okay that's interesting because that's that that's okay okay for some reason the gummy bear has the same frame updates which is wrong but um this should fix the gummy bear at least I think I think the frame will get set automatically by the routine anyway, but um, so I can probably remove that bit. Okay, so let's watch the gummy bear move off the screen. I really wish they they'd fix the kind of the um, the frame rate thing in in Vice. Because this colour looks terrible. I mean, you can see it flashing, and you shouldn't be able to see it flash. It should just look like a a really faint yellow. Um, but you can... Actually, it looks slightly better on the stream than it does directly on Vice. But on hardware, that will look fine. It will look like a static colour. Okay, so that's Gummy Bear fixed. So let's have a look at um, Saucer next. Okay, so the saucer is going to be a little bit different because it's flying, um, but it will have a change direction somewhere, um, which actually doesn't look like we're calling that directly. At least it doesn't look like we are. Yeah, it looks like we're just... Oh, X bounce, here we go. 
Oh, okay. Okay, so we're doing... Um... Oh no, this is this is randomly changing the direction. Okay. Uh so the accumulator at this point now contains Okay, so this is where we're actually checking for the bounce. Okay, I think what I can do here is... I think this will work. Let's, let's give it a try. So this is for the saucer. So we should see, hopefully, the saucer go off the screen and come out around the other side. Let's get some more rum in me. This is really nice rum, by the way. Definitely recommend it. You can have quite a lot in it as well. I was a bit worried that I'd put too much in, but... Oh, and of course the saucer is stuck over that side. Okay, it's, it's moving up. There we go. Okay, didn't see it appear on this side. So we're going to get MSB problems here. Yep. So this doesn't quite work. So maybe actually we don't need that at all because all we're doing is checking the screen edges, uh, which should be handling the, the, the movement for us. And we don't actually need to do a change direction here at all. Uh, actually check screen edges. Let's just do that. Let's see what happens. Hey, Sir School Legend. Welcome to the stream, dude. And yeah, as Foro said, that's the tools that I'm using. Um, thanks, Foro, for doing that. Hope you're doing well. Come on, hit the edge, will you? God damn it, okay. There we go. No, it's 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 going off the edge and then it's going so it's gonna appear here at some point, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's stuck in a weird MSB loop here where the MSB is set to something other than two. Okay, so um that means this check here. So this is what we were originally doing. So this was checking the screen edges and bouncing off the screen edges uh, using half hours. I don't know why it's using half hours. I guess for sim for for checking easily. Um, but now what it's doing is it's we want it to continue. So we don't want it to bounce if it hits the edges. We want it to carry on. But we want to actually have the check screen edges do something. So check screen edges. Um. Actually, we can do this. We can do this by using the original thing here. Well, we'll just we'll just adjust this slightly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to compare this to uh, player dot left screen edge divided by two because we're using half values, and we'll do the same on this side. So this should give us, um, and this will need to be plus one hundred. Because now we're not actually checking um, the MSBs included. Of course, we're half in the value up here. The MSBs included. Now I'm going to flip these around. I'm going to put jump in here for now. I might change that later. Uh, 
Wait, there's a... Why is that one there? What is that about? Why is that one being referenced? That's what I want to know. Okay, it's not being referenced in here. Okay, I think that's an unnecessary one. It's, it's probably a hang-up of something else. Yeah, it is a hang-up of something else. I'm pretty sure that... I, I'm going to leave it there just in case, but it's probably going to break. In fact, no, let's just delete it. Okay, so that means at this point here, we can flip these values on the head. So what I should be able to do is... So if we go off the left side, we want to load 0, 1, store that here. If we go off the right side, we want to load the accumulator with uh, player right screen edge and store that there. Then do we need to do the bounce? No, we don't. So we can just go to exit bounce instead. So that would be the same here and then this goes here as well and that would be zero and that would be left okay mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> oh dear sparky so if you I always wanted an opcode on a number plate. Yeah, I don't drive, so that's uh, I would never get that anyway. But um, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, if you if you need a very specific tune and you're worried that you might not get it, so like you just have, then you need to put the full path in. So if you go to Deep Sid um, and put the full path in, or if you just put the the last name of the artist. Uh, and then the name of the tune you you probably got a good chance let me let me add that for you and i'll show you what i mean don't don't do it again i'll, I'll do it for you hang on so if i go uh, here so uh, delta is hubbard isn't it so if i do hubbard delta there you go because it uses a it uses a weird fuzzy search and what it does is the first match it finds it uses that Okay, that looks like the sorcery is working correctly now. Um, yeah, that's pretty spot on. That's good. Okay, so we just need to do it to the uh, the boiled sweet guy, and then we're done. Okay, so boiled sweet. Probably going to be the same, actually. I'm assuming that the code is pretty much the same here. Um, I'm sure we'll find out in a minute when I check through the update. Um, yeah, it is exactly the same. Look, we're doing exactly the same thing here. So... Let's go and have a look at that again. Um, where was it? Oh my God, where's it gone? Oh, okay. So this is what we're doing instead. Okay, so let's copy that. And hopefully it's got exit bounds, which it has. Screen position should be all the same there. So I should just be able to delete that piece of code. And we should have a boiled sweet, which does the same. And then that's that's our enemy behavior is done. So a dog cheated, he walked. And this is nowhere near as good as Delta by Hubbard, is it, at all? So I've been struggling to think what to play tonight, but I, I've got to admit it. I, I kind of enjoying the code tonight, so I might I might just extend the code a little bit more and just keep going. Um Yeah, that's that's pretty good now. Cool. So that's our enemy wrapping done. Okay, so what I want to do now is add a new macro in which is gonna actually clear underneath. Um So there's a few ways to do this. One way is to just automatically um, just have a macro which just checks directly underneath the player, which means the flying ones will never will never set it, but the walkers will. Um, the other the other method as well is is whenever you check beneath the player, 
uh, beneath the enemy, if it's colorable, you set it to white. Um, I'm going to favor the first method because I don't think the flyers should change the colors. I think only the walkers should. Um, so by allowing us to specifically set that um, is going to is going to make it a bit more flexible, I think, than just hard coding it so that any time a collision is done beneath the enemy, um, if it's colorable, it sets to white. I think I think it's better to have a specific method for that. So um, what I'm going to do now, then, in that case, is we're going to create a new enemy macro in here. Um, it is going to be a macro, but it's going to be it's going to be like my other macros. It's going to use a subroutine. Now, the reason I I like to use macros like this is because it means you can pass parameters into them. Um, now, this it probably isn't going to pass a parameter in, um, but I'm still gonna I'm still gonna use it as a macro. And it actually it might pass a parameter in. Uh, so this will be uh, clear colorable. And this is only going to be applied to some enemies. So we'll start by uh, just dropping a load of uh, jelly bean guys in or something, something that we can we can test on. So uh, those behaviors don't have it open. Uh, jelly bean number two. There we go. Well, let's do it in the color bottle actually, because that color bottle moves around a lot more. So let's do it with that that guy, and then go to the color bottle. So what we need to do in here is before we position the enemy, the very last thing we're going to do is uh, clear colorable. Okay. So we do we do have a collision check in here somewhere. Um, actually, it's probably just part of the macros. So it's going to be very similar to the collision check. So if we find a collision in here, uh, yeah, basically this sort of thing here. Um, so let's see what that's doing. So that is actually returning the character at that location. That's not what we want. What we want is we want this collision point here. So we do kind of need to um, need to do this ourselves. So I'm just going to copy that block here, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to change it because this is going to be very specific to the to the enemies as well. So. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to load the accumulator with our X offset and load the Y with our Y offset. Then we're going to jump and get the enemy collision, which is this bit. So we don't need that. So we just need to get the collision point. Uh, don't need that either. Okay, so our X offset is going to be halfway across the enemy. So it's going to be 0C. And our Y offset is going to be uh, 20. So, uh, no, 21, because it needs to be below the enemy. So that's going to be 1, 5. Um, and then get collision point. So now I need to work out what get, get collision point actually does. Um, utils get character at. Okay, let's go and have a look at get character at, because it's going to be based roughly on that function. Okay, so this is this is wrapping that stuff again. So we're going to need to do this same thing. Um, and I think what we can probably do is we can create a, a routine to set color at with colorable. Which seems like a massive routine, but a uh, massive routine name, but should be enough. So if we go in our enemy macros, and then to the bottom and do that that should be enough that that should be our entire macro and actually we don't need to um we don't need to do anything else there that should be enough because what's happening normally in the collision um uh, 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 i'm just trying to keep it a check on chat in case i'm missing it 
And was it the Delta Loading Music? So, Sparky, if you want a, you want a specific tune, what you can do, I'll, I'll demonstrate again. So, um, if you go into Deep Sid uh, and you type, you search for the tune that you want in Deep Sid. So, we want Delta. Okay. Uh, and you can see there's, there's a lot of tunes in here. Uh, so you've got this Delta Mixi loader. It's the loading tune you want. So um, if you click on that, <coughs> so there's two ways of doing this. This is our Mixi load tune. But if you add more than one tune, you could add a number on the end. But we're just going to add this this Mixi load. So all you need to do is copy the path, excluding the first forward slash. Um, and then when you request the SID tune, you just type that entire path in and it will find that exact thing. Now, if you want to, if you want to add a tune with a specific uh, tune number, so say I wanted to add, uh, and I'm going to find a Torican tune because I like Torican 2 tunes. Um, where is it? Torican 2 Final Fight. So I really like Track five on this, I really like. So what I would do is I would go, uh, I would do my normal search. So I'm going to do Turrican final fight. That should find it. And then you put a hash and then the number, and it will cue that subtune for you as well. So you can actually cue subtunes. Haha. <laughs> I've I've set it up so it is pretty easy. I, I've tried I've tried to make it easy. It does actually mention it in the in the um pop up when you request this issue. It's just not very easy to uh under, it's not very easy to read, unfortunately. Uh okay, right. So enemy macros. Okay, so what I'm checking now is it's up here somewhere, wasn't it? All right. Uh, check screen edges. No, no. It was a collision I was checking. Dot position. Blah, blah blah blah. Get enemy collision. Here we go. So it it runs get collision point. Uh, and then get character at. Okay. Right, so let's have a look at utils. Get character at so this returns okay so this actually sets collision lookup so we need to copy some of this so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this bit because this is this is our uh, border checks we could actually turn this into another function uh, which will save a few bytes um yeah I'm going to call it uh, rat x. Uh, I'm going to put that in here. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm setting a collision lookup. Uh, based on the values that are returned from uh, from the X and Y here. Now, um, which is this here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check if the collision lookup uh, is colorable or not. So we'll do that by just using the normal thing here. Uh, so we'll compare that to Collision colorable up here. Um, um, and if that's equal, or if that's not equal, we'll go to exit. Actually, no, if that is equal, we'll go to exit. I think this is one of the things that trips people up quite a lot. It's when you do a comparison, if you want to know if a value is set or not. Um, oh, no, hang on. No, branch is not equal. Yeah. But there are, see, I mean, it's tripped me up because I've had some booze, but hang on, my step's handing out money. We've just given. <laughs> uh... 
as a roof to the map. The crown gets stuck in there, falling down. Ah, yes, yes. I will. I will explain that. Yes. So this was one of the problems Hayes had on his level. I couldn't quite remember what it was, but um, if you if you do this, for instance, but you have a gap here then what can happen is things can fall down here and get stuck up here. So you need to make sure if you have a gap here, it matches up here. If you have a gap at the side, it matches on the sides as well. You need to make sure that your wraps work properly. So please make sure that your top and bottom edges match the top and bottom and your left and right edges match the left and right as well. Again, these these are things I, I will check here, yeah, but... Um, yeah, because you've got to think of the map as tileable. So if you were to tile that map in every direction and then drop something through it, would it would it work properly? So it needs to it needs to be a seamless kind of match. So it needs to be wrappable, yeah. <laughs> Fixing your coding with workarounds, yeah. Um, well, the the problem is, is because if we're going to have wrapping on the levels, I mean, you can't really have a level, you know, if we're going to have left and right wrap, you can't really have a level like that because what happens when you walk off this edge? You know, either, either we need to make it block when you get to there, which is kind of awkward. Um, I mean, not impossible, but it is awkward. Um, or we need to make it, um, and actually it will look weird as well if you can't walk off the edge here. Well, you can walk off the edge here it would look strange so yeah i did i did enjoy that uh that netflix documentary actually it, you're right though it did have a lot of fluff in it and there was a lot of stuff that was that they missed out like they didn't mention the commodore they kept mentioning the apple II as being like really you know revolutionary but actually the commodore like outsold everything so yeah I've not been very productive this year. I've I've really really struggled this year. But um, I'm I what I've realised in the past couple of months is that doing these streams really helps me kind of um helps me get the uh get the kind of creative juices flowing. So that that's why the check and stream exists. Um, that's why I'm going to introduce the Mega sixty five stream in November when that when that arrives. I I'm really looking forward to that. I'm I'm really hoping I can make something that competes with the likes of R type. Um but R type not on the C64. We're talking R type on the PC engine, R type in the arcade. I want that level of shooter. It seems you the more free time you have the less motivated. I I, I think a lot of it has been the, the COVID thing. I, I've just I, I've gone stir crazy inside since since I've been locked inside, and I'm 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 an inside person. I'm not an outside person, you know. I like to be in, but since I've had no choice, I find myself way more demotivated uh, to do stuff outside of the streams. The streams are what keep me going. If it wasn't for the streams, I wouldn't code at all. I don't think. Uh, Cobra Kai on the hand is Netflix. Yeah, I need to watch that. I might start watching that soon, actually. Um, did the government come and lock you up? No, but I'm, I've got a lot of anxiety with it. I'm, I'm terrified of going out. I am absolutely 110% terrified of going outside. It's, uh, to me, it, I, I can't believe when I look outside and I see people walking down the street, I, do, I, I can't believe that they're doing it. And without masks or anything, when I go out, I go for a 15 minute walk. I, I will cross the road if anybody approaches me. I will walk in the middle of the road if people are on both sides of the of the road. I'd rather get run over than than walk past somebody within two meters. Um, and I'll wear a mask, and nobody else wears a mask. It's uh, it's it's so stupid. Um, I'm I'm annoyed more because I'm trying to be really sensible. I'm trying to limit my exposure or my chances of exposure to the absolute minimum. Um, but nobody else seems to be doing that and it really pisses me off. Okay. So we've got, um, collision lookup now contains, uh, a value that's pointing to a, a, a section in memory. 
that is uh, our buffer. Now our buffer is at BC00 to C00. Uh, but all I really need to do is I need to load the value, I uh, clear the carry bit, load the value that's at elision lookup uh, plus one, and then I need to add um, DA minus uh, Uh, what is it? Uh, buffer MSB. Is it going to be the first one? I can't remember if I've actually stored this somewhere. Hopefully I have. Uh, nope. Sorry, I can grab it from the tables. That's fine. I'm going to just grab it from here somewhere. Where is it? Uh, buffer. So if I just grab this first value here, tables.buffer MSB, that will be the, the maximum value. So um and what this will do is it will convert that that screen lookup or the buffer lookup into um a color lookup instead and then all i need to do is load y with no load i need to leave y alone um because i need to, i'm using the y index here but I do need to load the accumulator with zero one, and not zero one, sorry, zero eight because it's multicolor, and store that at. There we go. Right, set color at if colorable. So, all I have to do now is call this macro at the end of a routine, clear colorable, uh, which I'm going to do in the cola bottle to begin with. So I'm just going to do it here, which I'm already doing. Uh, so let's make sure the cola bottle is set up. So hopefully now the cola bottle should clear. Um, oh, why is that not working? I spelled something wrong there. Where's that? Oh, uh, temp one. Okay. yeah it's it's not it isn't trivial and i i think people people are just being way too blase about it and the thing is one thing trump did get right is that the cases would go down in the summer right people don't have the flu people don't have the cold in the summer they don't have it and this is basically another cold or flu it's just a very deadly one right um compared to cold and flu so What's going to happen is now the weather is kind of turning and we're turning back to winter again. We're going to start seeing increased cases of it because it's going to it's going to be able to transmit a lot further and a lot easier. And people are just getting far too confident about it and thinking they're not going to get it. And I'm, I'm just really worried that um, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be in for one hell of a shock um, when they find out that they're... they're they are going to get it basically okay this isn't clearing beneath it okay so which is a bit worrying okay this is fine so what we need to do is we need to stick a break point in um, and just check underneath as we as we move through so this is where we're doing it um if i just put a break point in here just i just want to make sure this is actually running and then if this is running we can we can start thinking about um checking um breakpoints a bit further so we should hopefully see a break point as soon as the enemy pops out we should get a break point there we go so so we're actually we are running that routine that's correct um so let's go and have a look at that clear clear color if colorable okay so this is what's happening and we're, we're running this and this is where we're actually making the decision whether or not we change things or not so i'm going to put a break point in here and see if we're actually changing things um, we should be if we're touching anything white. So if the if the player is um, touching anything um, on the ground, we should we 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 should get a break point. And we're not getting a break point. So this should be breaking now, and it's not. So that means that these collision checks are not working correctly. So uh, let's have a look. So. Uh, 
Okay, so we're doing a comparison here to Collision Colorable, but what we're not doing um, is anding it. What we should be doing is anding it with that value and then doing it, and I think we'll see it then. Because the, the ground is not only colorable, it's solid as well. So there's actually two bits that are set. Um, and we were only we were only checking to see if one was set, um, not technically both. So we should get a break point. Actually, we get a break point straight away, which is interesting. Um, okay. Well, that is interesting because that should not be happening so quick. So, uh, oh, okay. So actually, we do need branch of equal here. So we check if the ground is colorable. If it's not, because we're not doing a comparison, we need to do branch if equal, branch if not branch if not equal. Um, so hopefully this should just work now, um, and we should see the ground turning white underneath the, the underneath the enemy, underneath the middle of the enemy. Um, so I'm going to set the ground to red in a few places. Okay, so it's not happening on either of these. So let's take a breakpoint in again. This was the wrong track, wasn't it? Oh, well. Anyway, you, you get the point with it. So if it's not colorable, we go to exit. If it is colorable, then we need to do this, uh, which is, is grabbing the color ramp. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in here. We should hopefully see this when something hits the ground. So, And then I think what I might do after the break is, is uh, change the power-ups a little bit um, to make them a little bit more... Um, uh, discernible they're a bit they're a bit kind of nondescript at the moment it's hard to tell what each one is doing so um okay so that isn't working now is this just because of the place we're checking maybe we're checking in the wrong place so we're checking 21 down 12 across let's let's check a little bit further down let's check 18 down which is 24, so that, that definitely should be in that range. Um, we should get a break point here, hopefully. Okay, still not seeing a break point. Um, and the player is definitely, the, the enemy is definitely on that position. Uh, okay, util set color if, okay, let's have a look. Ah, hang on. So what we're actually doing here is not the full get enemy collision thing so um let's go and have a look at get the enemy collision so let's do it through this it's a bit easier macro get enemy collisions get collision point okay so we definitely still need to call this so I'm actually going to copy those routines there and drop them in here as well. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be right. Let's give that a try. Yeah, even, even just Pasting the link from DeepSid will help a lot, definitely, um, because of the way that it's it's set up. It should it should definitely help a lot if you do that. Okay, this isn't terrible though. Tools get character at so yeah, tools get character at. It's this bit here. Okay, yeah, this this should work. I think I just need to just need to do this down here. There we go. Uh, 
uh, what did you actually search? The thing is, is because because a, a SID search will return could return fifty songs, right? Um, the the fuzzy search algorithm is trying to pick the closest one. Oh, that did not work. That went horribly wrong. Um, so what it what it does is um, it, it scores everything and then picks the first one with the same score. Unfortunately, the algorithm scores some things exactly the same. So the more information you can provide, the better. So if you provide the word delta, um, any anything with the word delta in it is going to have the same score as anything else with the word delta in it because they all equally have the word delta in. Um, it's fuzzy search. Fuzzy, fuzzy search is a pain in the ass. It really is. Um, Okay, I don't think I need to do that, but I do think I need to do that. Collision point. So I feel like this is breaking for some reason. So what I'm trying to do here um, is basically emulate the, the get collision point, um, which is this bit here, which sets the, ah, it sets these values first. Okay, that's the problem. There we go. I'm going to go for a break in a minute as well. Hopefully this is, has done it. I kind of need a break. But I'm, in, I'm enjoying the... There we go. Okay, so now we're getting break points. So let's get rid of that break point and try again. Although that break point is still happening way sooner than I would have thought it would happen. Um, but fine, whatever. Um, also, I think I can move that back to that as well. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so let's just do... Oops. Let's just do uh on earth have I done there? Let's just do that and see if it crashes. So I can at least work out which section it's crashing in. I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be crashing in the uh in the zero page um in direct Y lookup. I kind of see yeah, I mean it's not crashing there, so it has to be there. Right, I'm gonna take a break. When I come back, we'll fix that bug. Uh but I'm enjoying the coding tonight, so I think we'll just keep going with the coding stuff rather than play anything tonight. Um, all right, I'll be back in uh, five minutes, guys. Be right back. I'm back, guys. Just a reminder as well, um, at the end of this week, I'm going to be compiling a list um, of suggested books. Uh, listen, also, can we have a raffle? Andy fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be compiling a raffle of, uh, uh, compiling a, a list of the suggested books. So if you want, to oh, wait, hang on. Andy didn't fall asleep. He <laughs> he's awake. He's awake. He's awake. He's just ignoring. <laughs> um, yeah. So if if you want to suggest a book, going to Discord. Um, I'll post a link to that now. Um, join Discord, go into the uh, book suggestions channel, post a link to your book from either Amazon or from Thrift Books, uh, and I will take a look at um, take a look at the list. I will pick out a, a, a range of books in there, uh, and then the week after. So it won't be it won't be next Saturday. It'll be the Saturday after. So that will be the twentieth, uh, I think uh no the the 19th it will be uh so on the 19th of september we'll do um another giveaway and the winner will be able to pick up to 100 pounds of of gifts uh, of books from that list so um we're doing it this way because books are going to be expensive to ship so i don't want to ship them to me and then to ship them to somebody it's going to be a lot easier if i just ship directly to the the winner um 
so yeah, I I think a hundred pounds is is probably gonna gonna cover 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 it. But um, yeah, just if you've got any books you're interested in, put them on there. If they if they fall within the price range, and they're in stock, then I will add them to the uh the list, and then whoever wins will be able to pick from the list. I missed a couple of follows as well. Wister Tobe and Mariog Software. Thank you for the follow, guys. Uh, I'm just going to recheck my alerts. I can hear them. I don't know why I missed them. So apologies for that. Um, yeah, welcome to the stream, guys. Uh, good night, Carlton. Ah, <laughs> oh, steps. <laughs> Okay, um, what was I doing? I've completely forgotten what I was doing there. Anyone remind me what on earth I was doing? Oh my god, complete mind... But Oh, the coloration of the under the platforms. Okay. Yeah, so we're checking this to see what the hell's going on here. So this routine seems to be causing a problem. Um, set color out. So get collision point. What is that actually doing? So let's have a look at that. So that's in enemies. So that is in this one here. Okay, so this is returned in accumulator is X, Y as Okay, so then if we come in here Okay, so the accumulator is the X value, so we need to transfer that. So, wrap X. Okay, so that definitely needs to be transferred there. So that's going to check our X, and we already have the Y. So hopefully that should be fine. Um, I just need to remove that crap there. Uh, and then the only other thing I need to do is make sure that this value is correct here. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in here. Because uh, at this point here, we should know if the ground is colorable or not. So as soon as we hit a colorable, we should get a breakpoint and then we can start stepping through the code. Or at least check the values that we get. But you see, it's it's hitting that colorable before the accumulator is two zero um, at this point. And collision lookup. Okay, I think we need to do this in the debugger because there's something odd going on here. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, they seem to be checking. They seem to be checking as soon as they exit the pipes, um, which is wrong. Why is that not loaded? Don't touch anything. Okay. This happens sometimes, and you just have to go and detach everything. Um. I heard that follow. Uh, Engineer's Finest, thank you for the follow, dude. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so let's let's see what happens. So as soon as one exits, we're hitting a breakpoint. Um, and then it's going, it's going, let's see, we're not hitting the breakpoint. I know we are. Here we are. Yeah, we are hitting the breakpoint at that point. Okay. Uh, now, the screen has gone blank. I don't know why it has gone blank at that point, but it should not have done. 
collision lookup. So let's go and have a look at 05. Uh, 05 is this one here. Oh, wait. That does not look like the right place. That looks like the right place. Hey, God, what is going on here? So this is what normally happens. And this is what we're trying to do. So this should be the same. We're not doing anything different here. If you look at this. Oh, zero four. No, that is correct. Okay, so. Oh, okay. This is wrong. That value is wrong there. That add seven B is wrong. Uh, why is it wrong though? That's weird. Tables buffer MSB. Oh, because I'm adding... Ah, okay. This is just me being stupid. Because I'm adding the memory address and I'm not adding the actual value that's there. Okay, this is fine. Uh, So, basically, buffer MSB. So, I just need this instead. That's, what I, that's the problem. Uh, need the upper byte of that. Now we're still going to get a break point when we come out, and I don't know why that's happening. Uh, but hopefully now it shouldn't break. But you see, it is setting. It is setting that value. One, two, three. Ah, there's something weird going on. <laughs> Thanks for the bits, Doctor. Ah, uh, good night, Hayes. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna code tonight. I'm enjoying the coding. Um, I'm I'm determined to get as many of these bugs squashed as possible tonight. So, um, and and as many of these extra features as well. It broke the pipe as the enemy went down. It yeah, it it did it. It this this check is not working for some reason. Um, I I do wonder if this is even correct at this point. Um, I mean, I could probably change it for this instead. Uh, so I'm going to put the breakpoint into, let's see, set collection. I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it up to here. And then I'm going to go and have a look at that value. Because I don't think that value is correct. I think that's the problem. I'm going to do it in the debugger. Make Andy stop abusing this. Oh, I don't I don't mind it. Andy, Andy points out quite a lot of good things. A lot of the time he's behind by about an hour, but... Uh, new feature found chucky block switch isn't properly detected level spawns in default switch at the same time ah okay just on the chucky one okay thank you thank you i will check that one out so i will probably release a new version of the editor tomorrow um your save files should um your your, your save files should work um your PMP project files, anyway, should should still load in fine. I'm going to make sure that that uh, that that functionality is retained. Uh, so don't don't be put off making levels now and, and testing things. Hey, he's woke for nothing. <laughs> it did listen wake you up? <laughs> oh no, you woke before that. Anyway, game doesn't happen till half past two. Anyway, so. <laughs> uh, Andy's handing out points now. 
Okay, right, let's go and have a look at this memory address. Let's have a look. So this is the memory address here, which is BE80. And I'm pretty sure that is going to actually contain uh, zero. Yeah, so that is definitely not colorable. So I don't know if I've got this the wrong way around, maybe. Um, let's just have a think about it. No, if it's colourable, it should be jumping to the exit. It should be jumping here. Let's put the breakpoint there. Let's try that. We'll get there in the end. These these are kind of the, the, the fiddly bits. These are always going to be like this towards the end of a game. It's There's no real way of getting around this. Okay, so we've hit the breakpoint again here. Um, our accumulator now contains the value at that point, and it's zero. So we should be able to skip through, and it goes straight to exit, which is correct. But for some reason... some reason one of them is picking up this one here must be picking up a colorable oh fuck i know why sorry pardon my french it's not very french is it the word fuck but yeah uh it's because what i'm looking at is um a screen value whereas what i should be looking at is the actual collision value. Missing follows again. Well, how am I not hearing them? I don't understand. Thank you for the follow, Zach Twitch stream. Welcome to the stream, dude. I don't know how I'm missing them at all. Okay, so hopefully now we won't get a break until it hits the floor. Well, it said we're not getting anything appearing there, which is interesting. Oh my god, what have I done here? Because if I don't call this routine, it's fine. Ah, because I'm bashing X and I should not be bashing X. That is the problem. So what I should be doing is storing X temp here. And the next temp there, there we go. X, you have to leave X alone. You can type for quick grown-ups, yeah. I've got my earpiece in. I don't know why I can't hear it. It's really weird. I just keep missing some. I think I'm just zoning out on some of them for some reason. Maybe I need to change my alert noises so it becomes something new and unique that I'm not used to. Um, okay, that's still failed. Let's have a look at this. Right, so... Get collision point. Is that actually using that temporary value anyway? Maybe, maybe, maybe this is actually bashing that value as well. Get collision point. It is bashing that value, so that's no good for me to use that. So I'm actually going to cheap out here. I'm going to... Um... I'm going to use the, the tried and tested method of using the stack. This is why the stack is good. You can't you can't get conflicts on this. Well, you not not quite, but um Proton Fig, welcome to the stream, dude. <laughs> Eldritch, my god. There we go. Right, but we're not getting a break now, but hopefully this should colour the ground now, so 
No, it's not doing. God damn it. All right, let's put the breakpoints in, though. Oh, this should be so simple. Hopefully we're getting breaks now. If we get a break here, at least we're, we're part way there. So we should get a break when it hits the ground and no other time. And we don't. Okay, god damn it. God damn it. <sighs> okay, let's let's move the break point to here so we can actually see. This is so frustrating. This should be really simple. You can enjoy the coding play. <laughs> I don't know why we say pardon my French when we swear. I don't know why that is, because none of our swear words are even the same in French. So it makes no sense. But we do indeed say that, oh, I need to get some more, more lemonade. Oh, I'll just have a stronger one, whatever. I'm going to get lemonade after this drink. I'm just going to have to take my time on this because it's like half, half, half. Okay, so we're at a break point here. Accumulator is zero. So what are we looking at? So, okay, yes, no colorable there. So I'm not expecting a colorable until this guy hits the floor. Then when he hits the floor... I would expect at least some colourable, and none of them are shown as colourable. The accumulator is always zero. Uh, okay. What is X? Okay, so X is 25 here. So if I look in the character map in here, 25 would be this, which is, a no, would be this, which is a pipe, which is that guy there touching the edge of the pipe. Okay, so maybe the collision check is in the wrong place. We're getting zero on this one, which means blank space, which is probably this guy here, 25. Zero, 25, zero. Okay. Now he's moved away. It's zero, zero. Okay. Okay. This is easy then. This is basically when we do the collision check. Here, we're not checking far enough down. So I'm going to check two more pixels down. Ah, oh, my God. Shimmerbot is terrible, isn't he? Okay, so... Um, okay, we're getting that breakpoint all the time now. But hopefully when that guy hits... The... Ah, okay, cool. So you see he's now clearing that floor. And that's, that's working. But the problem is we're using the wrong colour. Um, which is easily fixed. So let's just go into here. Let's remove the break. And change this to 09. That should fix the problem. Oof. There we go. Perfect. Oh, it's... Okay, so there is a small issue that when you throw a projectile and it gets stopped by an enemy walking. So if I throw this now, the enemies aren't going to clear. Oh, that one is actually, but there you go. It's stopped. And then the, the, the thing carried on again. So what's happening there? Okay, so... The enemy is... What's actually happening there? Let me think about this. 
So when you throw a projectile, what happens is it hits the ground and then it spreads out on either side. So it goes left and right, filling in the colours. But when you hit the ground while an enemy is walking across it, Actually, it's kind of hard there because you've got two enemies on it. Let's see if we can stop one of them. There we go. There we go. Right, so let's let's hit this as an enemy comes onto it. Okay, there we go. So it's still trying to spread out, but it can't. And it's actually not carried on. Okay, let's, uh, let's try on this side. Oh, God damn it, I've stopped them all, haven't I, at the same time? So how do I stop that? So if... Hmm, I need to think about this. Yeah, enemies stop the spread, which is fine. But what you'll see happens is if if the spread is happening as the enemy walks across it. So if I do this now... Ah, oh, damn it, I've missed it, haven't I? Fuck, I'm going to stop them all in the same place. All right. Let me get down on... on uh... All right, let me, let me restart. Uh... Good night, Retro Steve. Thanks for joining. Uh, will the paint spread... Have completed before checking for enemy war. Yeah, so this is the problem. So, oh, for, oh god, I missed it again. Uh, thanks, Max Limits, for the follow. Thanks, Andy Magic Knight, for reminding me of that. Cheers, dude. Uh, Max Limits, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream, dude. Um, I'm doing a terrible job of hearing those tonight. I think I did hear that actually. I think I was just, I, I think I've become numb to the, I think I need a new follow noise. I think I might have to do that. So. Yeah, so the spread happens over multiple frames. So what happens is every frame it, it checks if there if a spread needs to happen, um, and there's an origin point for the spread. And then as the spread happens, it creates two positions: one on the left and one on the right, and it just advances them until it hits the edges. So the problem is that if you start that spread it's trying to spread across the screen but the enemy is walking across it at the same time so the enemy is clearing it and it should stop the spread but it's not stopping the spread what it's doing is is the spread is just continuing regardless of whether the enemy is there or not um i'm not sure what to do there that's the tricky one because the spread is happening it, it basically it checks it checks the position. It says, um, my colour is red. I'm trying to spread red across the platform. Is the position to the right and is the position to the left red? If it's not, then advance. So if it's white, it advances. If it's the enemy colour, it advances. But the problem is if the enemy's walking across it, the enemy is leaving white behind it. So as you throw the red down and the enemy approaches that, it, the red reaches the enemy it colours underneath the enemy red. The enemy then changes it to white. And then it tries to colour past it. Um, whereas it needs to stop if it hits the enemy. Mm. I'm not going to play it. I think I'm, I think I'm just going to code steps. I, I think we're... Um, I, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm just going to keep coding, to be honest. Maybe call spread after enemies are walking. I don't think that's going to matter. The problem is, is that if the enemies are walking, the spread is, the spread ignores them, basically. Um, which, for the most part, is kind of fine, but it does cause some odd behaviours. So, like here, for instance, here's a good example. Okay, so... You see how it continued afterwards? Um, it's almost like it needs to check the previous position. 
And if the previous position that it, it came from is white again, it needs to stop. That's what it needs to do. Okay. Okay, so um, this is going to be tricky, but let's let's give it a shot anyway. So this is in platforms. I'm just going to knock the font down by one because I'm, I'm struggling to see it, actually. I do need to definitely get some more lemonade because this is super strong. But it's delicious. I definitely recommend this, by the way, guys. If you've not tried this and you're a fan of rum, Give this a try. It's quite sweet, um, but it's nice. It's it's a very nice, very nice um, spice rum. I definitely recommend it. I'm feeling very drunk as well. This is. I'm glad there's no maths in this. I'm glad this is just logic. Logic I can do. Maths I can't do when I'm drunk. Um, okay, so this is where the platform is filled. This is where it looks to the right, and this is where it looks to... Okay, so if I fire off to the right, we're looking to the left. So let's let's fix that side first, and we can worry about the other side later. So this is the left. Okay, so what is it doing? It is looking for the platform character and checking if it's colorable. Um, I'm not sure what platform complete is. It looks like the number that it's been doing. Um... We compare to the new color here. So we, we actually check the platform look up here. Um, y is set to zero at that point. Uh, so look, channel colors, comma Y. Okay, so going to the left, we subtract one. Uh, and then we store that value and then we find a new color and we set it. What I think we need to do here is instead of just blindly setting the next color, we need to check the position that we're currently on. Um, now that is being set platform char lookup. Are we using a, it looks like we're using a, is that zero page? Maybe it's a zero page thing. So look. Uh, uh, uh platform char lookup okay so we are using platform char lookup here um it kind of needs to be here i think i think we need to do a check here to see if our current value, if the value that we we changed last, basically, is is white again, um, then we need to stop. Uh, this is a this is a tricky one. This is a really tricky one. Do you think what's happening? So. So we get the platform lookup. Okay, so that comes from so fill platform. Uh, let's see, is update color origins? No, there is an update. Is it this one? Maybe it's this one. Yeah, it is this one. Okay, so we take the platforms, we take the origins. Ah, okay. So what it's doing is wherever the color lands, that is the origin, and then what it does is it keeps looking in that direction. Until it finds a non-white character, a non, um, until it finds a white character, and if it finds a white character, it fills it in and carries on. Um, the problem is, is obviously if a if a character is walking along, it's going to keep clearing that same character. So the next time it checks, it just goes again and it finds the same character, sets it to red. The enemy clears it and it keeps going until the enemy moves completely off screen, and then it keeps looking and goes, oh. Now there's some free white space, so I can change that, and it clears it. Um, so that's what's happening. Now, how can we fix that? So, oh God, that, that is actually really tricky. That is really tricky, because we're using an origin. So 
uh, let me let me draw this here. So if you imagine this is a platform and the dashes mean white, right? When you throw a part, when you throw a, a thing, it it works out where the origin is. So I'm going to put the origin as O, and then what it does is every time it, it every frame, what it does is it checks the from the origin. It checks in each direction. So what it does is it checks to the left first. It says, okay, is the next character white? If it is, color it in. So we color it in red. And then it does the same on this side. And it keeps doing that every frame until it gets to the edge of the platform. Okay, which is which is pretty simple. Um, the problem is, is if, if a character, if a, an enemy is walking across it, what happens is, is it, it, it starts filling it in. Uh, let's say an enemy is uh, uh, this position here, right? Let's stick an enemy there. So it fills this one in. That's fine. Fills that one in. Then the next frame, it goes to fill it in again. It fills that one in and it fills that one in. But then the enemy says, oh, no, we need to clear that. So then what happens is the next frame it comes here and it fills this one in and it fills this one in. And then the enemy says, nope, we need to clear that. And it just keeps doing this over and over and over again, right? Until at some point this side is completely filled in and this side has still only got to this point then the enemy moves to here and now it clears there so now it fills that in because it's still it's still trying to do it it's still in this loop it still thinks it's not complete and then it gets cleared again and then the enemy moves to here and now it can clear all the way along so in the next four frames it fills it all along so what we need to do is we basically need a way that if if there is an enemy in that position and we reach this point when this enemy clears it when this enemy says clear here it should cancel it it should say okay i've reached the edge now stop filling it in stop filling it in the problem is is that's not going to be easy because the only data we've got is this origin here and the position of the enemy. So we've got this position here and we've got this position here. We don't know what comes between there. So imagine imagine there's a gap here. What do we do here, right? If we fill this position in here and this sets here, should we stop this from happening? So imagine this is like that. Should we stop this one from happening? Do we need to check all the way this way until we find an origin? Can you create two origins, one at the far end and one under the enemy? I think what I might need to do, this is what I'm thinking. So what I'm thinking is, is instead of using this origin, what we need to do is as we advance, we need to move this origin. So it doesn't care. It doesn't care what was behind it. The, the origin is just moving. Uh, why is it capitals all of a sudden? The origin moves along. So this was the actual origin. And this is the origin as it moves along. So what would happen in this case is it would go, okay, this, this is your origin here. Set this to two. I'm trying to make this as obvious as possible, right? Set this to two, right? Next frame, color in the each, go in each direction, color these in two. But now, set a new origin, set a left origin, set a right origin. And then this way, if this, when we reach this point here, let's move the enemy up a line so it doesn't clash with it. So when we get to the enemy, like this, so now the enemy is clearing this point here, but the origins are now here. So what we can say is, okay, you're you're clearing this, but the current origin is in that position as well. So we would have to check through when the enemy clears a position, we'd have to check if there's any origins that are currently in that position and make sure that they're cleared. Um oh my god, this is such a pain in the ass. That's one way of thinking about it. I don't know if anybody's got any better ideas. It seems like it should work the first way. Oh, hang on. Fucking text is terrible. 
It seems like it should work the first way you explained. You have two points moving out from each frame. Yeah, which is what this would do. So the two points would keep moving in each direction. Uh, the problem is at the moment we're using a single origin and that, that's a problem. Um, also, thinking about it, if we do it this way, we don't actually have to check. So let's imagine we have two origins, right? So this is our, this is our initial origin. Um, so the origin happens and it colors it in. Then on the next frame, it looks at the platform and it says, okay, this is my origin. Um, so now I need to expand out. So I'm going to expand this way and I'm going to expand this way. I'm going to move my new origins to here. Oops. So now I no longer need this origin here. So this two is always going to stay there, right? So then on the next frame, it goes, okay, I need to put a two there. I need to put a two there and I need to move my origins. Okay, everything's great. So then the next frame, it goes, okay, I need to move my origins across um, and set the colors. But then at this point, this one is going to go, okay, clear that. Okay, so then on the next frame, this is going to go, okay, move my origins and set the twos like this. So it won't actually stop at the enemy, it will go through the enemy. But where the enemy has is walking, it will start clearing it. That actually works better. I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay, let's go with this method. All right. Okay, so what does that mean? So that means in platforms, we've got um, origin MSB and origin LSB. So that means we need two more of these. Um, what we need is origin LSB2. Uh, let's call this origin RSB right and origin LSB, origin MSB right. We'll use this one as left all the time and we'll use this one as right. Okay, so that means we need to store these values in the right as well, because these need to start in exactly the same place. Okay, so now we've got, we've got two values, one that's going to the left, one that's going to the right. Uh, okay. So here's the first problem. Here's the first problem. We are checking just one of the LSBs. And what is it? Uh, one of the um, color origins. So what is it checking? It's checking. Uh, so it's getting the color and it's comparing it to C. What is C? C would be. Oh, this is if it's if it's black. So this is if it's stopped. In which case we store zero and we return. Okay, right. Okay, so let's let's change this. So this is left check. And this will be right check down here. And this will be jump to right check. God, this is going to get confusing. So now it, it's checking. Uh, okay, let me just remove that. So I'm a bit worried about that. Okay. Okay, let's let's waste a few bytes and make this simpler. Let's um, let's check in both directions, like so. There we go. So we'll keep the origin as as the the center point where it actually hits. 
and we'll have a left and we'll have a a, a right version of these okay so we set those values up and left check is no longer checking the left. So this is checking the center point. And this is checking if the center point for some reason is blank. Um, oh, okay. So this is, we've landed on something. So we're checking if our color is is the same if it's not then we we blank it out otherwise we move on to uh, the next platform so that that's fine this is just increasing the platform this is not a loop this is just adding a new platform so this means we can only have, have eight platforms um advancing at the same time um which should be plenty i think so then this is the update origin so what this is doing is, is it's looking at the origin um and it's advancing. So here is where the problem is. So this grabs, uh, let's have a look. So some branch if not equal. So this is grabbing. Platform chart lookup. Okay, so that's set. Uh, here okay so we need to add some extra things in here so we're going to add another one in here uh, i'm going to call it right i'm going to add one in for left as well uh, okay so come in here so this check is actually checking the original value so this is checking the original position on the screen. But what we need to really do here, um, subtract, okay, so this is all origin. Get the low, least significant by, store that, store the char lookup. Okay, so that's one block. I get the MSB, store that here. Okay, so this is color and char lookup, color and char lookup. <clears throat> but ideally, what we need to really do here is take uh, the color origin LSB left and right and do this. <clears throat> um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure this is, is still working and I'm going to commit it because I'm... Um, <coughs> <coughs> A bit worried about this as long as this is, is kind of still working oh my god that is strong yeah see look see look how it's chasing the the enemy here still chasing the enemy and that's because the origin is set the way it's set and when they go off screen it will fill and there you go um so this is this is kind of working uh i'm going to commit that and I'm going to um, mm, okay oh god we've done a lot here okay what have we done so we've um, added uh, uh, screen wrapping I did uh, updated behaviors uh, what else did we do? We did something else as well. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I did need to have less than five pipes. Oops. Also, that's secondoid. That's that's completely the wrong thing. Oh my god, okay. Oh fucking hell. Alright, I've added the wrong wrong data into that. Uh okay. Uh 
Okay, so Secondoid has got a weird commit in the middle, which makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> this is what happens when you work on multiple things at the same time. Uh, all right. It says me right if you're not looking at it. But yeah, Se Secondoid now has a, a pick and mix commit in the middle of it all. Although, interestingly, I didn't commit um, Secondoid, so I should probably commit that. Uh, but all right. I mean, it's only me that looks at it, so it doesn't make any difference. But um, it is going to be strange when I go back through commit history. Oh, no, I just pushed. Yeah, I, shit, I can, can I, as well? I could have... Uh, never mind. Never mind. It's fine. It's, it's only a commit message. It's fine. I'll know when... I, as soon as I look at it, I'll go, yep, yeah, that makes no sense. I know what happened. Oh, Acme Finney, you and your jokes, man. All right, so that's committed now. So that means I can I can work on this. So um, I can't even remember which fucking thing I'm in. All right, platforms. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do instead, so here we're, we're actually setting up the two values. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it for the left first. Left. Is it left? Yeah, left is the side I've been doing it on. So... Uh, I'm going to take the left. I'm going to store that platform and char look up. Um, let's separate this a little bit. Let's put a comment in here to say left. Uh, I'm going to take the color origin S E C. Oh no, there we go. M slash L. There we go. Subtract screen RAM store. Okay, cool. So platform lookup and platform char lookup need to have two separate ones. So that's what we need here. So this would be platform lookup left, left, char lookup left. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we're going left on this one. Okay. So. In fill platform, that means when we do the left check now, instead of using plat chat form lookup, uh, char lookup, we'll use plat chat form, plat platform char lookup left. God, I can't speak. Whoever it was that said I slur when I'm drunk, you're right. <laughs> I can't, I can't think straight at all. Platform lookup left. And I can think straight. I just can't speak. That's the problem. Look, look up left. Char lookup. Uh, original color. Yeah, that's fine found new color that's fine left complete all right so i think this should work for the left hand side now so we might get it working on that side so as i shoot over that way we should get it working hopefully um all right so let's we need to wait for them coming over all right there Oh, fucking hell. Every time I hit these. God damn it. All right. I just need them to... to... Ah. I need to go for a smoke in a minute. That's what I need. I think I missed another... Oh, no. Max limit. So I, I, did miss... I didn't miss that one. No, I did miss it, but I got reminded about it. No, it didn't work, did it? Okay. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it it's not that bad, but I don't... There's there's a certain kind of uncertainty about what the hell's happening here that, that pisses me off. Like, when this guy walks off screen, the whole platform's going to go red now. I oh, know it doesn't. Ah, okay. So let's try it. Let me get right on the edge. Okay. Oh, wait, it's only doing the left check and not the... Ah, it's not about which side I throw it on. It's about both sides. Okay, so that is because what I need to do is in here. I need to do the same with right as well. Uh, okay, so this needs to be... every Anytime there's an underscore... Left, there needs to be no right as well. 
Okay, uh, and here as well. Oh, and there. That was... I missed one there. Uh, that one there. Oh, that would have caused some issues. There we go. Oh, my God. Seriously? Airwolf again? <laughs> you guys are addicted. It's not even August anymore. Stop it. Okay, so then in fill platform, left is checking. Checking left, 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 left. Okay, left there as well. So this needs to be underscore right. Okay, underscore right. Underscore right. Underscore right. I feel like I'm missing one there. Platform. Complete. That's fine. Okay, well, that should be right, apparently. Ah, okay. Well, that's fine, then. <laughs> Just so you know, Proton, this is about the ninth version of Airwolf I've heard tonight. So that's, that's why I'm, I'm being a bit disparaging about it. It's a good version, though. It's all right. It's a good version. It's better than the original. Uh, better than the um, the one in the game, that's for sure. The one in the game is terrible. Okay, so let's see what happens. I would expect this to not advance, but I have a feeling it's going to... Oh, damn it. Okay. That one goes off. It's going to fill in. Yeah. Okay. So I think this... The advance hasn't stopped, which is fine. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. This is because... We're not advancing the origin. We're not advancing the origin. The origin is still in the middle. Uh, so even though these have been set, it's still in the middle. And the reason it's in the middle is because this actually, it actually isn't storing anything again. Um, I don't know. It says it is here. Color origin needs to change. That's what it is. Okay, um, so, all right, let's let's do. Oh fucking hell, this is confusing. Right, let me let me go and have a cigarette. Let me think about this. I think all I need to do is update the color origin uh, on the left and right. It's not being updated, so it's still moving from the beginning. So you can see here, it's doing compare color origin. It needs to move outwards as well, and it's not doing. So I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, we'll sort that out. This is going to be the last thing I do tonight, I think. Um, and then I might just try and make a level, I guess, and, and test it out. All right, I'll be back in uh, five minutes, guys. Be right back. Oh, and another airwolf. My God, you guys. <laughs> be right back. <laughs> and Airwolf is still going um, back. Did I even set the break on? Oh, I did set the break on. Okay, good. Stop that now. I don't remember setting that, but okay. <laughs> okay, I've got some lemonade to go with my rum, so I can keep going for another hour or two. Thank you for the follow, MKVSNG as well. Welcome to the stream, dude. Right, okay. So, I know what needs to happen here. So, I'm going to... I've I've done a commit, so I'm, I feel confident that I can do this now. So, I'm setting the two origins, which is fine. I'm going to actually remove this one. I don't think I need this one at all anymore. So, it does mean... I need to do this twice as well. Oh, wait, hang on. So this is adding the color origin. Okay, hang on, let me put it back. Okay, it grabs the color and it checks. Otherwise, it clears it. Okay. Okay, 
So we can do left and right here. So we check left. Um, where we do this. So this is when we initially add. And this also needs to be platform lookup left. And we set that in left. Okay, so that's that's done the check left. Uh, okay, no, that's fine. That should stay like that. So now we need to do check right. Whoops. Uh, that should be left there as well. Check right. Oops. Set that. There we go. So now both has been checked. And we can exit safely. Okay, so that's adding the value in. So that adds the first value in. I'm going to get rid of these lines. I'm just going to comment them out for now. Um, because I want to try and keep color origin left and right. So I want to try and make sure that it won't compile if I don't, don't do the code properly. So I'm just going to get rid of these bits. Okay, so that sets the left and the right. So now we have two origins to work from. Cool. Right. Okay. So update origins. So we start with the left. So let's. Uh, okay. So let's do left here. So we're going to grab the color origin and we're going to set that into the lsb to set that in the lower byte of the color lookup and the child lookup because they will be the same then we're going to load the origin left msb and store that and store the color lookup child lookup and color whatever it is there we go right so now we've got the left side set so now what do we do okay so these values are actually set in these here, so we've already set those, so we don't need that. Um, and we don't need that as well. Okay, so. Then the right hand side does the same thing. Okay, so now we have the right hand side set. Um, So then this needs to be set for each. Okay, so we can just call fill platform. Okay, so this is filling the platform from the left. Okay, so we need to take our lookup on the left. Okay, so we need to do a little check here first. So we've removed a check from above up here. So what we need to do is we need to check to see if any of these are zero because um, where is it here? Uh, the color origin, if that is set to zero, then we can just exit. So uh, which we do here. Okay, so um, I'm going to put exit there. Now, the reason I'm going to put exit there is because I probably need to count if both of these have exited or not. But for now, what I can do is if it's equal, um, I can jump to right, which is going to be here. Uh, actually, right needs to be set as well. So in the MSB here, we'll also do an exit. 
Okay, so we need to count these values here, but we're, we're going to need to do in the fill platform, we're going to need to do something as well. So this is left set, this is right set. Okay, so now in the left hand side. What the hell was that? I'm not sure what that was. Oh, oh okay. Good thing he's too busy to read chat. Who needs Bitcoin when you got Shimmy Shilling, Shalalon.com, the Shimmy Files, with the name of the disappears with all Shilling. Dot Cosmos Casino. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to start reading chat because I need to really think about this. So now I have left and right, which could have zeros in the MSB of color origin. If they've got zeros in the MSB of color origin, um, then I don't need to do anything. But if they do have, if they don't have zeros, then I do need to do some stuff. So let's load. Uh, let's do the left first. So I'm looking at this value here. Chart origin left. Okay, so. Um, okay, transfer Y to the accumulator, push the accumulator as a stat, then branch if, okay, so that's not going to do anything if we reach this point. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to branch to here and then jump to skip. And this is our X account here. Okay. Otherwise, I need to grab the value in left. It's not equal to skip. Increase platform complete. Ah, so we already have a platform complete here. So I can increase that there and jump to skip. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just going to bring some equal to skip. Okay. Uh, so if it is colorable, we go to here. If it's not colorable, we jump to done left. So this should be done left. So this is the new check we're doing. And we jump to done left, which is down here. Otherwise, we actually fill it in. And when we fill it in, the other thing we need to do here is we need to actually update this value. Um, so at the moment, we're updating some other value here. But what we need to do is we need to take the uh, LSB value here from X. Oops. Subtract one from it. And then we need to do the same with the MSB. Oh, God's sake. Apparently, my copy paste skills go downhill as well when I've had a drink. So, okay, so now we've updated the color origin as well. Uh, then we can do, do the found new color. Okay, so this is a new section, and this is a new section. Uh, sorry, this is a new section as well. <clears throat> So the question is, are we using left and right on all sides of this and not using anything else? It looks like we are. Okay, so the right-hand side. Okay, right-hand side. <sighs> okay. So on the right-hand side, we need to do the same check. So we need to check if our color origin... Uh, so that would be after the push, which is here. And we check the right hand side this time. And we put a oops, there. Okay, so is that right? Okay. And if that 
is complete, then we do a done right. Otherwise, we come into here and we do all this crap. Uh, and then at the very end, we need to add one to it. So wherever the... Oh, it's going to jump loop there. That, that worries me a little bit, but um, okay. It's a bit different here. Skip, delay. Transfer accumulator. Oh, and then I guess it's just doing an increase Y, yeah, which it is doing there. Okay. Uh, okay, compare new colour, brands from equal found colour, then do some advancing of that value. Increase Y. Okay, so I think I can leave that there. I'm I'm so convinced this is not going to work, but um, it's worth a try, right? Find new color, left. Find new color, right. Fuck okay, it, let's just try it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so line one away. Okay, right. Okay, so this is just an error on, on my part. Um. If you call right, oh, this is update the plot origins, which cause a jump platform anyway, so shouldn't have that in there anyway. Plus one, yep, yeah, okay, that's fine. And the other arrow is down here somewhere. Um, unknown symbol, color, origin, MSB. Turn off update. Okay, so done right. So there's probably a done left up here, which there is. Okay, not sure what's going to happen here. This is super, super shady. <laughs> oh, no, see, it immediately crashes. Wow, okay. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's think about this. Okay, so at this point, we have the correct stuff so let's just put rts there let's make sure this works if this works then we're good we can we can work out the rest from this okay no issues at this point so it's a problem in this routine so um okay so we set zero to platform complete so platform complete is counting whether the left and the right are finished um we probably don't need to do that. So we can probably just do that with this section here. Um, so let's have a look, right? So this is doing left. So setting Y to zero, because we're using zero page Y index lookup. Um, we grab the color. If it's colorable, we go to here. If it's not colorable, then we increase this so we say that the platform complete is is done actually this probably needs a little bit more so this this probably also needs a zero putting in here as well um so i'm just going to put a zero here and store that in our msb on the left hand side uh and then it's going to jump to done left so it's not going to do anything on the left hand side okay cool right hand side so this needs to do the same thing so if we um if we say we're complete on that side we also need to blank out that that side as well so as well as doing that we need to do that but on the right okay so let's assume both are finished then we would come down to here 
and we would load this value and this would say okay we've we've finished on both sides um so we need to do this which would turn off both sides as well okay so let's have a look in the update and make sure that that's actually being addressed properly okay so we're not doing anything here if if the msb is set we're not doing anything so um let's do the same count on this side so let's uh let's store platform complete up here as well uh, let's call that platform complete base uh, i don't want to mix those up Uh, and so we would increase platform complete base here. And we're going to do the same thing on the right hand side here. Um, and then checking both sides okay so we're checking the low byte we're checking the high byte if platform complete base okay so we'll we'll load platform complete base and compare it with two oops fuck it out there we go and if that's equal we'll jump to skip yes i got the fucking fly nice that's dead <laughs> otherwise we jump to fill platform cool right so if the platform is complete we're not going to do anything otherwise we're going to jump to fill platform oh my god that proper, i proper squashed it as well i've been after that for like three days that's annoyed the hell out of me that okay so then we come into here and we go to the left right so we check our msb if the msb is zero then we're finished and we go to platform complete okay so we don't do anything in that case which we already know because if we reach the edges we don't do anything if however we we do need to do something we come into here in which case we load platform child lockup l which is set up here um and that's set from chart origin okay which is msb yes Uh, okay, there's a problem here. That shouldn't be increased platform. What this should be here is um, if that is not equal to zero, jump to here. Otherwise, jump to uh, right. And then store that value carry on um same here oh, branch is not equal to here jump to done so we don't call jump call platform if that hasn't been set but if it has been set we set left and right okay cool so left hand side so left hand side um okay so blah 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 okay so we load the character that's on the left hand side and we get the collision value so we get the color value so whether or not it's co collision uh, colorable or not if it is colorable we jump to here if it's not colorable then we set the msb of the origin to zero so the same thing we we're checking for here um and increase the platform complete which starts at zero uh then we pull the accumulate from the stack because we pushed it here and we jump to done left which is actually not in this list anywhere oh it's still it's there okay so we don't do anything however if that value is colorable then we jump to skip okay uh follow listen uh thank you noctis 1992 thank you very much for follow sorry i'm in a i'm in an absolute zone here so i'm um 
I'm struggling to keep up with the follows and stuff. Thank you very much for the follow. Uh, maybe let's spread my sort of the origin and direction in each frame. Yeah, that's what I was doing originally. So originally I had a, a, a color, an origin, um, but I didn't have a direction. So th so that's essentially what I'm doing here. I'm making sure that every every color origin has two directions. So, um, but I'm I'm in a zone here. This is this is pretty good. The rum is really helped me. I don't know why, but rum rum coding is very good. Okay, so um, if it is colorable, we jump to here. In which case, we pull the accumulator, uh, which is zero, and we transfer it to Y. Don't know why we do that. That's a strange one, but okay. Um, then we load the platform lookup. Okay, so platform lookup would be the color at that point. Um, we end it with F because obviously it's a color, so we need to make sure we ignore the top four bits. Uh, and we compare it to the new color. I'm not sure what new color is. Um, new color. Okay, so. Projectile index. Okay, so we take the player color. We add eight. Next color index, new color. I'm not sure what that next color index. Maybe this is the oh, this is the this is the index through this lot. So this is the index to advance through this array. So um, next color index in that case, a new color is okay. All right, I know what that is. That that's the color that we're we're, we're trying to apply. So so we check if the color if the platform that we're trying to change is the same as the color that we're trying to change it to um if it's not the same then we go to find new color which makes sense if it is the same however um then we just advance which is correct and then we jump back to here and we do the same again so this loop is kind of unnecessary but i'm going to leave it in place because it, it, it it's kind of working like that so I don't want to break anything in that in that case. Um, find new color. Okay, so find new color is here. Um, so what I'm going to do is move that sh to here. So this is going to advance our uh, color origin. Um, compare to original color. Okay, so I'm going to push the accumulator here. I'm going to pull it again. Okay, so find new color. So we compare to the new color, and that value is the value that is currently in the platform. So we compare that to the original color. So this is comparing uh, original color. That's going to be the color that is max platforms. Okay, color, original color, original color. Store original color. Okay. So this is the color that that you landed on. So if you landed on white, then it's going to be white. If you landed on the enemy color, it's going to be the enemy color. Okay, so so this is fine. Compare branch will not equal left complete. So if the value that is currently um, Yeah, so this is making sure that you you fill in only either white or your color and not the enemy color. So this goes to left complete, which increases platform complete. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to take the new color and store it and then jump to done left. Okay, right, cool. So we basically need that same thing. Whoops. Uh, which we should already have down here, which is this bit here. Um, but that should really be in here with a push and a pull on that side. Come to the original color, new color, 
So it's done right, increase platform complete. Okay, and then if platform complete happens, then it cancels both of those. All right, I think this should work, but I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. This is um, kind of random. Uh, okay, one, three, four in platforms. Oh, I've done some mis mislabeling. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'm done. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, all right. This is the most intense um, that I've done in a while. I've missed another. Yeah, I've missed another one. Sorry, Andy Magic Knight. I don't know why that listen didn't work. Um, I didn't hear that either. Uh, but eat, sleep, play, repeat. Thank you for the, the follow and welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, okay. Wow. Okay. CPU jam. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, wow. That's completely, completely knackered. Okay, so let's just go in again and check update color origins. If I just put an RTS here, what happens? There is a cooldown on listen. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I I need. Well, I think the cooldown's probably all right as it is, but yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you. Eat, sleep, play, repeat. Eat, sleep, play, repeat. Yeah, I am slurring quite a lot. Okay, so there's definitely issues in this routine. So let's have a look at this routine in detail. Okay, so let's just let's just deal with the left, uh, and we'll put an. Uh, can we put an RTS on this side, or can we just jump to skip? Let's just jump to skip on this side. Let Let's get this this side right, and that, let Let's get the left hand side right, and then we're all right. No, that's the full platform. That's not why I wanted to do it, actually. So, it's this one. Wait. Yeah, it's this one that's the issue, I think. I think we put an RTS there. This is really tricky because this is uh, this is this is code I did quite some time ago, um, and it wasn't the the most um, kind of. A generic code in the world is quite unique in what it's doing um it's not something you would see very often in code so yeah so this this looks like it's kind of working fine with that taken out okay so it's definitely this routine that's causing the issue so let's go ahead and it's the right hand side so let's put uh let's just jump to done right there so we can just sort out one side and then we can we can sort out the other side because the the other side should be pretty much a carbon copy of this side so <laughs> oh my god i'm missing them all what on earth is going on thank you egg salt egg salt adorb uh welcome to the stream dude Thank you, Andy, for keeping on top of this. I'm I'm really bad with this tonight. I def I think I definitely need to change that noise. I think I've become, um, what's the word? I I, I think I'm just kind of blanking that noise out for some reason. So, oh, I love this version. Thank you, Steps, for for requesting this. So yeah, if anybody's got any uh, ideas what my alert, my uh, follow noise should be, please drop it in Discord. Um, I I will change it to. Something reasonable. Oh yeah, maybe maybe it's too quiet. Let me turn it up a little bit. Maybe if it's a bit louder, I'll I'll notice it. Okay, let's let's sort the left out. Okay, so CPU jam kind of screams that we're 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 breaking the stack somehow. So let's first let's deal with the stack stuff. So we're pushing to the stack here. Uh, but we do have a jump here, which is jumping to done left, which means it's not pulling from the stack. So maybe it's just as simple as doing that before the jump. Um, because we have a pull here, we have a pull here, which is also, yeah, uh, I think that might be it, actually. Let's have, let's have a look. No, I do not want the alert to be entertainer. That would drive me absolutely insane. <laughs> Okay, no no crash, so that's good. So this this could be it. Okay, so let's
I think that is it actually. All right, let me let me re-enable that side and um this was not an easy piece of code. I have to say, I'm very impressed with myself for being able to do this while drunk. Um, this is this is a very complicated piece of code. Um, and to be able to do this while drunk is impressing the shit out of me right now. So if I get this working, I'll be very, very happy. Yeah, no one entertain that that would just be that would be a nightmare, I think. Okay, so no crashes, which is good. So it was just a stack thing. So it's always a thing. If you get a CPU jam and you're using PHA or PLA, then that should be the first thing you check. Make sure your PHA and PLA match. This looks actually accurate and it hasn't carried on. That is good. Right, so if I drop on that side, it should stop. No. Okay, it hasn't quite worked. It hasn't quite worked. Oh, pardon me. Um, it kind of worked on, on the left side, but not on the right side. So I'm going to restart this and just check that. We're, we're kind of almost there, I think. We've got rid of the... Oh, despite a weird black thing. Okay, I need to I need to sort that out. There's a little black bar that appears across the screen. I need to fix. Okay, let's get right on the edges. Okay, so here's the edge. Okay, so so when this guy goes off screen, it should not continue. Oh, it's it is kind of almost there. It seems to be right on the left hand side, but not on the or not on the right though for some reason. See, look that the 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 guy at the front there. Okay. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. So I th I think we're almost there. I think we're almost there. I'm impressed that this is working at all. I really am. This is this is kind of crazy that this is even working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this entire fucking block out here up to this point. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to comment all of this out and then I'm just going to copy the left-hand side and just see if I can make this work just by changing all the rights to lefts, lefts to rights even. Okay, right, let's go through it. So, obviously, comment should be... Oh, no, 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 no. It's not going to work. The reason it's not going to work is because on this side, we do some... Oh, no, no. It can still work. I think it can still work. Okay. I think it can still work. We just need to think about this in in a little bit of a kind of logical way. Okay, so we've got left and we've got left. Okay, so right. So let's do the right hand side. So the right hand side, again, we're going to start at zero. Now, before what we were doing is we were actually doing some 16-bit uh, addition, to 16-bit uh, subtraction to go backwards. Um, because obviously, if you just decrease Y, then you're going to end up, up at FF. And actually, you can end up 255 characters ahead. Um, but what we can do is we can change this, um, the right-hand side, to use addition as, instead of just increasing the Y. So you'll see down here, um, where is it? Somewhere in here. We've got an increase Y, which is just basically adding 1 to the, the Y index. But instead of doing that, we're going to still use 0 as our, as our base. And we're just going to move using addition on a 16-bit six, addition. So all I need to do is change everything to the right. So that should be right. This should be done right. Uh, this should be right. And this should be right. This should be done right. Let me support. 
boobs. I mean, I'm doing all right with that. I'm I'm like halfway through the bottle. Well, just just over, just under halfway. I'm telling you, rum rum is good, man. Rum is making me poed quite well. Rum is might be better than wine. I seem way more focused. I don't know why that is at all, but I I really do. You know, find new colour, right? There's something weird with me and booze. I don't know what it is because I know it's not normal. People should not be this coherent when they they've drunk alcohol um i mean i know that 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 kind of vocally i'm not that coherent i'm quite slurry but um mentally i i feel really good about this i feel feel on the ball I and mean, this is code i haven't touched for three months or so and i'm i'm kind of getting to grips with it i don't know what it is it's weird <laughs> oh, pardon me. I have got the burp, so it's all that seven up. Uh, left complete. Okay, I've missed something. Oh, I missed that one. Oh my god, I've got hiccups. I said I didn't want hiccups on stream, and I feel like I've got them now. Okay, no crash. All right, right, let's. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. That's not as anything. That's because I'm using subtract and not addition. I need to change that. So here, I need to change that to. Uh, oh. Add, and add zero there. It should solve that issue. <laughs> Oh no, it's still only moving on one side though. Uh okay. That's a bit worrying. Okay, let's have a look. Uh blah 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 blah. Yep, yep, yep. This should be moving it along. That is unusual. Um hmm. It's moving on the left, but it's not moving on the right. Okay, so taking our origin, uh, ignoring that if it's zero. Okay, that's good. Uh, so if it's not zero, we come to here. Then we look take our lookup, and we set zero if we need to set zero. Otherwise, we jump to here. At which point we transfer. Yep. Oh, this jump loop thing probably doesn't need to happen anymore. Um, oh, yes, that's what's happening. Okay. Okay, right. So we've still got this original loop in which we need to take out. So um, we need to stop checking at that point. Um, <laughs> thanks for the fellow Proton Fig. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I'm really, really blank to that noise for some reason um so thank you andy magic knight for doing that i i don't know why i actually heard it um but my brain didn't do anything about it so uh I, apologies for that thank you for the follow um i'm just in the zone that's what it is i'm in the zone man i'm in the zone i can't i can't i can't be dealing with that shit right now i'm in the zone all right let's give that a try oh man Rum makes you deaf. It doesn't make me deaf because I can hear all the tunes. Fine. I think I'm getting into the I'm getting into the zone. That's that's the problem. Ah, uh, there we go. Right. Okay. So now that's working across the platform, and that's blanking out, which is good. So let's try and set that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's set on this side.
this is looking good this is looking pretty pretty spot on actually so this guy on the right hand side okay so it should that's perfect that's exactly what i wanted to do and it's oh my god how have i done that how have i done that that's incredible i'm going to celebrate by downing this entire drink cheers guys rum is incredible <laughs> Oh, God, it's making me burp a lot, but yeah. Holy shit. How how did I do that? Fucking hell. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, no, that's working. What the hell? This is... Okay, now that was off screen. That's fine. That's coming on. Yeah. This is working. Oh, my God. Okay, so let these guys be a poor. Holy shit. I think rum might be my new drink of choice. I will I will I will release a version of this tomorrow. Um version one point oh three or whatever. Um but please give it a try. Let me know what you think about this, because this this is actually quite an important piece of the um a piece of the gameplay really we need to we need to know we need to know if this feels right or not and this this is i mean even the even the stun guy isn't doing anything which is exactly what he should do um so if i hit that this is spot on okay cool right let's let's add that all to the the other enemies okay so we need to add this to every walking enemy so all we need to do is before we position the enemy is called clear colorable and that should fix it so uh let's add it to the jelly bean which is another walking enemy there's the position so let's add clear colorable uh gummy bear is another one position enemies there so let's do that um what else have we got so we've got uh boiled sweet no candy cane candy cane is one so candy cane is a funny one because as the candy cane jumps around oh i heard that jesus that's really loud well <laughs> done <laughs> Thank you, Steps. Thank you very much. Appreciated. Um, quick, commit that to Seconoid. Yeah, Checkanoid even. No, I'm going to commit that to the right one. So, uh, oh, I don't even know what to put it. Um, well, let let me let me apply it to the other enemies first, and then then I will commit it. So, uh, and, and test it as well. I'm not I'm not just going to commit it. So, clear corable gummy bear jelly bean mallow. So the mallow definitely should because the mallow has a as a slam on the ground so whenever it slams on the ground it should be setting that value to to zero as well it should be setting that value to non-colorable uh power ups shouldn't do anything uh i think that's everything god i feel really cold have i got my no god it's just cold in here oh god can't believe this fucking works yeah this is that's incredible, honestly. That's the most complicated refactor I've had to do in six months on this easily. Um, and I managed to do it while really fucking drunk. I mean, I am seeing double right now. You know when I'm typing and I'm making mistakes? It's because I'm seeing two of everything on screen. That's why. Rum is... This rum is good. I need to, I need to get more of this rum. I feel energized and everything from it. It's great. All right, let's let's give that a test. Let's uh, let's stick a couple of different enemies in. So, uh, what, what do we want? We want um, we want all the walking enemies. So let's find the walking enemies in the list. Okay, so we've got uh, jelly bean, so number two, cola bottles, so number three, candy cane, which is number five. Uh, Mallow, which is number six, and Gumball, which is seven, and Gummy Bear, which is eight. So that's actually six enemies, so we need to change that to six. Uh, Power Ups, we've still got one in, so it should be fine. Okay, right. 
get the eye patch right. Yeah, I'm I am almost in eye patch territory. I really am. In fact, I'm having to change ear because this ear is really sore now. Test player two recolor over player one paint. Oh yes, I, I'll do that in a second. Yeah, I and I, I can't believe that it's working. That it's fucking crazy. If I do that there, what happens? So I think I need to absorb some of these because the uh, some of them are causing problems with the candy cane. So I need to. I need to. Fucking hell! All right. Oh shit, I absorbed the candy cane. All right. I need the candy cane to work on its own because the other guys seem to be all right, but um I can't believe that works. I'm 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 absolutely astounded that works. That was a hell of a lot of code changed. Uh and code that is changing memory based on indirect addressing as well, which is always going to be scary, so all right, there we go. So I've coloured that platform in now, and that guy, there we go. Right, okay. Oh, there we go. There's an interesting thing. So if the platform, uh, okay, so there is there is a little bug there. There is a little bug there, which is if the platform, if the platform is red and you hit it, and it reaches a white area, then it fails. I'm not going to worry about that too much because I think that's a minor thing right now. Um, I will fix that on the next stream because I think I am a little bit too drunk to do that right now. <laughs> I'm actually shocked I could do that. So let's let's just let's just accept this victory and and wait for the next stream for the other stuff. But this is looking pretty good. Um. What's that? Oh, Fistmaster, thank you very much. Four levels. Um oh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna try some of these right now. Um let me just let me just make sure that the uh the candy cane actually colours those areas in. Yeah, I mean, there's some weirdities. I think we do still need to fix some bugs, but the majority of it is working. Like the the bolt, the part that I really wanted to to work is is working. There's a, there's a few kind of edge cases that we need to resolve, but um, generally they're they're working fine. So, so like when this guy jumps now, yes, and he does, he clears beneath him, which is good. Yeah, he's clearing. Look at him. He's clearing little white patches beneath him. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, all right, let's absorb. Let's let's just go through the enemies um, and absorb them. And then I'm going to load some of these extra levels in and give these a try. Okay, so... This guy should be clear now, although he's stunned at that point, so maybe not. So the gummy bear is doing okay. The that guy is not. So the uh, the gumball guy is not okay. So gumball. Actually, I don't have the gumball open, so maybe I didn't actually do that. Update position, no. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be there. No. Not update position. Position enemy, there we go. Okay, so let's let's change the data around a little bit. Right, so we'll we'll keep the five enemies in place. Uh, but this time we will just add gumballs in, so that's seven. Uh, what was the other one that we didn't have working? The mallow. I want to check the mallow as well. So we'll have a couple of those. Eight is the gummy bear. So I'll change that to a mallow as well. Uh, that's six. Six. Okay, that's good. I, I, I'm honestly, I'm absolutely astounded how that works. I, I, I do not feel capable of coding at all but um 
somehow I'm actually managing to do quite well. Do you know what I, Cosmin? You've got a good point there, right? What I what I think would be um, what I actually think. So I, I I know it's it's not unique to me. I'm pretty sure other right. The thing is, is when when people drink, right? They think they're better at pool, and the problem is, is they probably are better at pool in some cases, right? It's the same effect that's going on with me and the code, right? There are certain things that you can hone in on when you've had a drink. Um, and for me, it tends to be logic. It's not maths. It's definitely not maths. But logical stuff, I can definitely hone in on. I think pair programming, while two people are drunk and have the same kind of brain as I do, where they, they kind of they hone in on logic, would be incredible. Can you imagine pair programming with two people that can hone in on logic like I can? Or even better, somebody who can hone in on logic and somebody who can hone in on maths. Imagine that. Drunken pair programming. Yes, Hackmovin. It would be great. It would be amazing. I still I still am absolutely determined to do um a collaborative stream where everybody has input on the same program i think it would be really good i can imagine it being uh quite impressive i'm not sure how to do it um but i'm pretty sure that there, there should be something okay so marshmallow is doing something gumball is doing something as well awesome Okay, so we have it. That That is it. That is the enemies doing their job, and that is the uh, colouring doing their job. I'm going to take a quick break, guys. Um, I'm going to need a cigarette, and then when I come back, we're going to try out some of these levels that Fifth Master has posted. Um, he's now posted four times more uh, levels than everybody else combined, so we'll, we'll go for that. Um, all right, I'll be back in uh, about five minutes, guys. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I've got a question for you guys. So I've just been outside to have a cigarette. And looking at the moon, it's three-quarter moon or thereabouts. There's a really bright dot right next to it, like an orangey kind of red dot that's just kind of up and to the left of the moon. What is that? Is that some kind of planet? I, I, I can't imagine it's a star. I imagine it's like Mercury or Venus or something like that. But if anybody knows what that is, please let me know. Mercury, yeah, I, I that's what I'm thinking. It's probably Mercury, but um, Mercury or Venus, I think it's one of those two. But it, it's incredibly bright, and it's right next to the moon. It's like up and to the left of the moon as you look at it. I think, I think that will be the same for everybody. I'm not sure how that works on the southern hemisphere, but um, or Mars, yeah, as well. It's Elon Musk. Maybe it's Elon Musk's Tesla. Maybe that's what it is. It's, maybe it's his Tesla. It's Mars. Thank you, Prow7. Okay, that's cool, because it looks kind of orange as well. It's, um, yeah, it's the roaster, yeah. <laughs> that would be cool if it was. Uh, but it's really bright. I mean, it, it like, really stands out. Are you sure it's not a, <laughs> a street light somewhere in the distance? Yeah, it, it's kind of like an orangey-red colour, so I, I'd say it's orange more than anything else. Um, but it, it's incredibly bright, yeah. It's very close to the moon right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prayer Seven. I knew it was something like that. I I kind of I kind of like astronomy and I I kind of follow it a little bit, but no, it's not the ISS. It's not. If it was the ISS, you'd see it moving. So, um, because I, I know I know when you see the ISS, it does it's ever so slow, but it does move. Um, and this isn't moving at all. I mean, it's fairly stationary. Uh, but it's really close to the moon. I just looked at it and thought, that's not a star. That's definitely not a star. That's a planet. Okay, cool. I might... Um... Sorry, have I got my binoculars? I don't know where they are. I might have to dig them out. But um, I might have a, I might have a look at that later. Because I do like that stuff. So, Did he wave at the little men on Mars? Good spot though, yeah. Well, it's kind of hard to miss. I look outside and there's a big old three-quarter moon and then there's a thing next to it what are you doing next on the game uh i'm gonna try some some levels out that um that fist master has posted so i don't know if fist master is still online i don't see his chat anywhere 
Um, but yeah, look outside. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm, I'm imagining it's in the same place. What would it be in the Southern Hemisphere? Let me think about this. Right. So, yeah, it could be very different in the Southern Hemisphere. But in the Northern Hemisphere, you should be able to see it just to the, the top left of the moon. It's quite bright. I mean, it's hard to miss. All right, let's let's download a couple of these levels. So I'm going to download all of these levels onto the desktop. Uh, and then I'll go through them one at a time. So I don't know if you're watching Fistmaster, but I'm going to um, critique these a little bit. Um, it's not any kind of take on anything you've done. You know, I mean, actually, to be fair, you, you've done... You've sent me some bug reports on this, so this is this is all good. Uh, you've sent me four levels, which is, uh, as I say, four times. The only other person who sent me anything was one level from Hayes. Uh, he's not here. Okay. Okay, no worries. Oh. You can see there it's Mars. Okay, let me have a look at that. That's really interesting. That's really cool that I can see Mars. That's that's so That's so awesome. Uh, okay, so it's loading the night sky. Uh, how do you see that that's Mars? How do you see that's Mars from that? I don't understand. Stellarium. How, how do you see that that's Mars? Click on Mars. Okay, Mars. Where Where is Mars on this? I don't see it. Oh, in the, in the, oh, Mars, okay. Mars, Rise and Set in London. Oh, it just says where, ah, uh, okay, I see. 180 degrees south. Is that south? That's not south, surely not. It's next to the moon. How do you see that it's next to the moon? I don't see that. All the planets are listed and you can click on them. That's kind of cool, though. I like that. Um, I wish I knew more about this, though. Mars. Okay. Uh, it should show the moon, too. It doesn't show the moon, though. This is what I'm seeing. So what do I need to click on here? I, I'm really interested in this because I love astronomy. I love... I love the um I, I I love space and stuff. I think it's amazing. <clears throat> Anybody in chat that likes watching Neil deGrasse Tyson videos, please give a plus one to or an F or whatever. <clears throat> plus one. Uh because I absolutely love watching these videos. <clears throat> Drag the view. Ah, okay. Ah, Wow, okay, I didn't realize that. Okay, so this is what I'm seeing from where I am. Okay, so where's the moon? Where's the fucking moon gone? So it's kind of southwest ish. So hang on, south. Yeah, south southwest is kind of which direction I'm looking in. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, and there it is. That's what I'm seeing. Mars. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, that's cool. Plus one, plus one. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> so I was watching a, a video last night about uh, Absolute Zero, and he had a really good fucking point about Absolute Zero, and the reason that that scientists can't can get very close but not quite to Absolute Zero, is because heat is is basically heat. Cold is the absence of heat. So to create the absence of heat, you have to take you have to have something that's that's colder than the thing you want to take heat away from. So heat travels to the colder area, right? So if you've got something that's one degree and you want it to go to zero degree, then you have to have something that's zero degree or less to take heat away from it. So the reason why you can't see absolute zero is because you can never have something um that is colder than no heat no heat is the absolute minimum no heat is zero absolute zero that's what absolute zero is it's the complete absence of all heat so in order to get to absolute zero you need to have something that's colder than absolute zero in order to take the heat away 
from that thing. So um, that was kind of interesting. I liked that. It was like a 20 minute video and I watched it and I was like, yeah, I get that. I get that. That that's really cool. I like that. I I've never seen that site before, and I shall be going to that again at some point. Um, so I'm interested. Is that the same for everybody around the world? So is there anybody from the southern hemisphere watching? Is there anybody Australia or or so that is uh, Australia, Brazil, uh, South Africa, that kind of place that's watching right now that that can see something different? Um. It is really cold here. Actually, let me just shut my door because it is really cold. See, you guys are used to me pointing up this thermometer and showing you like 30 degrees. And tonight I'm on 19.7. So it is actually getting cold in here. Uh, which is unusual. Right? I'm just going to have a sip of water because I just I, I, I need to drink some water. Otherwise, I'm going to have a hell of a hangover tomorrow. Andy, you're near Scunthorpe. Can you get me some more of this, please? Can you can you deal with that, please? Thanks. Uh, 19.7 inside, yeah, but I have had my door open. Uh, in fact, let me turn the fan off as well. Because I am sat here with all my fans blowing at me. Um, it's not a... Soul Foam. Welcome to the stream, Soul Foam. Can I show you what we have so far? Yeah, so... So far, this is... When did I start this? It was probably June last year. So this is... 14, 15 months, so... Um... Um, but this has been a very well. I say very collaborative. I have I have taken some kind of liberties myself. Um, but what we have is is a single screen platformer with some quite unique mechanics, to be honest. Um, where you eat the enemies as they as they approach. Oh god, damn it! I, I'm also these are these are difficult enemies probably shouldn't have these enemies on screen to be honest uh, but the idea is is you eat the enemies as you go along um if you eat the enemies you gain weight and when you gain enough weight you can trigger this little switch here which at the moment is just triggering down a little bit but oh my god those things are a pain in the ass When you kill enough enemies, come here, you little shits! God damn it! These are this is actually. <laughs> that suck at this game. When you gather enough enemies, the little switch here flashes, and then when you click the switch, you open the door. I can't get up to the door because the level is uh, incomplete. But uh, uh, so that's what I'm going to do next. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to load in some. Um, some levels that um, viewers have submitted. So what have we got? Eat my acorns. Let's go with that first. So eat my acorns. Who's this one? Okay, that looks pretty neat. I like it. It's, it feels... I like it. Actually, you're using the background characters as, as kind of growths almost. I like that. Let's, let's give this a try. It is a never-ending game, but we're, we're slowly getting there as well. So one of the things we definitely need to do is we need to deal with the uh, the, the crown on the player. It looks fine on... Oh, my God, I'm so, I suck at this. So how do I get up there? Oh, okay, let's see. I go through there. This is a good level. I like it. This is interesting. Oh, 
This is, yeah, that's an interesting level. I like that. I like that, Fistmaster. It's a shame you're not watching because this is, that That was an interesting level. I like that. So let's try another another level. So this next one is called Honeycomb. Okay, interesting. So this is using the Honeycomb tile set. Yep. So the crown crown position is something we need to work on because at the moment it's just appearing whether or not it's one or two player and it shouldn't be appearing if it's if it's one player. Yeah, this this is exactly what I'm thinking about about levels. This this kind of oh you fucker, you came out just at the right time. Okay. Oh god, that's that's got this way actually. There we go. Oh, it's still got me, damn it. Don't you want me? Okay, the the candy cane guy doesn't seem to be clearing the floor. Okay, which is oh, he's not clearing the floor because I haven't actually copied the PRG. Let me copy the PRG across before I continue anymore. So the version, I'm going to release a version of this tomorrow, the editor. Um, I'm going to take a look at doing tile set switching and what what's up with a choppy switch. Um, but at that point, I will I will try and um, release a version that has those fix. Though, that's a good level, though. I like that. I like that a lot, so... Oh man, that crown is going to be difficult to get, so I've got to go down there to get the crown. Okay. Yeah, okay, they're clearing. Do you know what? I like that clearing mechanism, it's really good. So, for those who don't know, the. Um, the colored floor will uh, so one thing i do notice on this is actually it's probably not too bad actually pink is probably all right um when you complete the level the number of these white tiles that are actually your color will will give you a bonus um so that means if you're in um two player mode there's a real battle to kind of color the floor as well it's not it's not just about um you know, it's about that. It's about colouring the floor as much as you can. In single player, it doesn't matter too much. I mean, obviously, it's going to give you high scores, but um, it's it's not going to affect the... Oh, okay. So th this is an interesting thing here. So what do we do here, right? So if I'm stood on this top platform here and I throw, then my bullet is going to go from here and it's going to go up into the border and then down. Now at the moment what happens is when you cross this border it disappears. It just it just goes. The bullet has expired. But maybe what should happen is it should go up and should drop down here somewhere. I mean ideally what would happen is the border would not be there at all. Right? You wouldn't you wouldn't see the border and you would see the player in its fullest. So now, now I'm thinking about it, that is probably the right thing to do. I think maybe the right thing to do here is to open the borders. Okay, you wouldn't see the bullet, but you would see the player. Um, and if the bullet continued down afterwards... Hmm, okay. Yeah, the, the border should be open, shouldn't it? Okay, that that's one for next year. I'm not going to do that now because I think that's a little bit more complicated. But um, definitely, we we should open the borders here so you can see the player. Even if the border is is black here, we should still make the border the same color, so you stand out of the screen. So so the border is still black here. It still turns to black here, um, but you should still see the sprite above here as well. That would be nice if you could see that. Um, 
you're not going to see the bullet. That's just not going to happen because it's a character. Um, but if you can see it kind of disappear here and then reappear around about here somewhere, that would be kind of cool. Um, okay. Okay, let me let me put that in my list of open borders. Yeah, I mean, the other option is to... I mean, this is what... This is... So the other option is to allow platforms only this high as well. Um... Which I, I guess is okay, but I, I like the idea of opening the border up here so you can still see the sprites move through here. So that means when a sprite moves down here, you would see that. I think that's kind of cool. Um, you know, you would, you would see that happen. Because I really like that this level is a nice design. I think it's good. It's, it's got symmetry. Um... Yeah, I, I like this level. I like this level. I, I, I'm, I'm going to investigate that. I think that should be the next thing to do. I think open the body without showing the bullets. But what it does gain is you will be able to see the top of the player. So when you're stood here, you would still be able to see the top of the player here. So even though you wouldn't be able to see the bullets move up here, you would still see the player here, which I think is quite important. Um, so even even if even if we don't include that, right? It's not like I can jump up here and and suddenly appear at the bottom. It's not like here where I can walk off the left and appear on the right, right? If I if I jump up, it's not like I can appear. God, okay. If if I jump up here, it's not like I appear at the bottom here. So it'd be good to just have some extra sprite stuff here um shall i take it to the next one? open all borders i think side borders is an impossibility unfortunately pro unfig i'm guessing you do a lot of audio for demos right <laughs> because opening the side borders as well would be absolutely insane in a game um it's it's fine in a demo because you can kind of control things, but when you've got player input and you've got randomized kind of stuff like uh, enemies, what I don't like is is the fact that I'm in this situation here, and I can shoot, but I can't see anything. That that is what bothers me here. Um, so there's two options here, right? I can well actually there's three options. I can do nothing, right? I can leave it as it is, and I can just accept that. I'm shooting at the top of the screen, so it's going off the screen and it's been disabled. That is going to be a hard sell for your average player. For your average player, they're going to look at that and go, well, my arc is usually like this. My arc is, is an arc like this. So I should see the bullet appear round about here and drop down. But they're seeing nothing. So the other option is to just add that in to... Um, the bullet arc as well. So when the when the when the soft sprites are fired, if they do go up into here, it doesn't mean anything. They they just they're this unimpeded um progress through this area here. Um so they can still drop in here. If they go too far then obviously they, they get blocked. But if they if they just drop in this area here in like one or two lines above the top of the screen, then they continue and they, they drop down. That is going to be the simplest solution to what i see as a as a kind of i i think this is a game breaking bug i'm stood here this is a game breaking bug to me i'm firing stuff and i'm seeing nothing i'm not seeing anything happen and that's bad so even if i just see the bullets appear here uh, and nothing above this line that's fine however i think the best approach would be to enable the sprites at this point so if i just open the top and bottom border at least I can see this sprite. Even if I, even if it's flipped at this point, I can see this sprite. Uh, which means when I shoot, all right, I won't see the bullet, but I'll see the player here, and I'll see the bullet drop down here. That's the best of kind of both worlds. 
Ah, yeah. Now, there's a good point for I. If I open the top borders, the pipes are going to look really stupid. That's a really good point. That is a really good point. So maybe the first the first approach is the best. So I, instead of opening the borders, I just allow the, the bullets to, to permeate through the border and drop down as well. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Well, I, I yeah, actually, I think Akmathin's right here. I think for I, I think you're absolutely correct. I think it's probably gonna look dumb, but let's not just assume. Let's let's try it out, right? It's not a difficult thing to do. Uh, we can open the border down here quite easily. Um, in fact, let's let's have a go at that now. I'm pretty sure we can do that quite easily. Um, Let's have a look at the IRQ. I'm pretty sure we can open that border pretty easily. Uh, so, utils IRQ. Here we go. Uh, okay, so let's work out where we are. Okay, so this IRQ is triggering one at the top. Okay, so it's triggering at the top. Uh, this IRQ is triggering. So this is happening at the top, but the next one it's triggering is at the bottom. Okay, so this is where we would do it. Uh, yeah, actually, we need. We probably need a third IRQ. I'm not going to do that right now. But um, yeah, I mean, we could extend the. Extend the pipes of sprites. Actually, that's not a bad idea because you only need one sprite, right? So, so just to go back to the game again. Um, pardon me. Rum is really hitting me. It's really good. So the only thing we'd really need to extend is these sprites. All right, these these little bits here that are at the edge would look weird, but I mean we can make that a. I mean we could say that anything at the top end here needs to be removed, right? That's not a, that's not a big problem. But even even so, it wouldn't look too bad if it's removed. The pipes would look odd though, because the idea of the pipes is they do continue about, along the top, so. Weren't we cautioned against feature creep when we were so... Yeah, but uh, opening the borders wouldn't be a huge problem, I don't think. So, the thing is, absolutely without fail, um, just to use this level as an example, absolutely without fail, I think this is, in my opinion, it's game-breaking. I think this is this is a really bad user experience. The, the player can stand here, they can throw bullets, and they see nothing happen. The player knows through through standing around... Oh. Oh. That is interesting. That is the same CPU jam we were getting a couple of streams ago. That is the CPU jam caused because we're throwing a bullet and then it's immediately dismissing. So we need to check that out. So I'm going to put CPU jam in the list as well. CPU jam from zero uh, throw. So what's happening here is we're throwing a projectile, uh, but that projectile is immediately being cleared uh, because it's right on top of a sprite. Um, so it's causing an issue. Okay, so we definitely need to address that. Yeah, so so there's a couple of different fixes here. The the easiest fix is as Foro says, we we prevent a platform from being placed in this position here. So that means that actually solid areas can only be on the zero, one, two, on the on on row three if you start at zero index and above, right? So that that's the easiest solution, and we can do that just by limiting the levels to do that. Um, the second easy solution is to allow this, um, but allow allow the player's arc to continue all the way. 
So the the player's arc doesn't exactly go high. I mean, it goes like one or two, one or two rows higher. So, so allowing the allowing the thing to continue but drop down on this side is fine, even if it cuts off, even if it doesn't show it. Just allowing it to go up would be fine because you're still going to get the same effect if you stand on, say, try and get to that area without causing an issue. If you stand here and jump, right, you're still going to get the same area, right? Same same problem. So uh, allowing that, allowing it to drop down the other side is is gonna is gonna solve these issues as well. So even if we prevent a platform like the one up there, um, or the one with the crown on it right now, um, we're still going to get an issue on platforms like this if the player jumps. All right, it's going to happen less often, but it is still going to happen. So I think the 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 best solution, the best compromise, is going to be allowing this 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 thing to continue off screen somewhere, um, just not display, and then display as it drops in the other side. So I think that's going to be the kind of the, the best kind of halfway point, if you like. Um, okay, I'm going to go for a quick toilet, a quick break, a quick toilet. Gonna go for a quick break um, because this rum is going right through me apparently. And then when I come back, we'll check the other four levels. But that that's a really good point. So that that's something um, I need to look at. I've got some I've got some notes about that now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the platform to this because I've just realised you could also have a platform here, one above it, and one above that as well. So I'm going to make this the limit where I'm stood at now. Uh, fist masses level, but I'm going to make it so you can actually throw a particle and it go throw a throw a projectile in it and it reappear back on the screen. Um, and then I'm going to check the other the other the levels in a minute. All right, so I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. Sorry, this is uh, so soon, but I really need to. Fair right back. I'm back, guys. So there's a few things with the enemy behaviors I noticed that they're they're getting stuck in certain places. Um actually it's not too bad. They're they are kind of moving around. Candy canes seem to get stuck in this area, but actually they don't. They do move around, so it's probably not too bad. Let's try another level out. So let's let's try um what else have we got here? So let's check on another I'm not gonna do much longer to be honest, guys. I'm feeling rather drunk. Oh, OBS has just disconnected. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> 